All right, before we get started, I just wanted you to know, wanted you to know who all is here. Hi, everyone. My name is Matthew Hendrickson. Uh, I work for the Department of Transportation. I'm the project manager for this project. Um, we have a great group of folks. Uh, we are well staffed here this evening. Some folks you may recognize um, through our community liaison office. Um, you'll be hearing from myself, um, from Melissa Nicholas, who's with RKNK, as well as Tarina Galloway. Um, we have a, a team of both city staff and consultant team uh, here working with you. Um, and you can recognize us because we've identified ourselves within our names. Uh, and so you can see that. We'll also be going into some breaking out, breakout rooms where we'll have further kind of more uh, smaller group conversations. So um, we really appreciate you being here and look forward to hearing from you. Um, but uh, before we get started, I wanted to turn it over to our deputy director um, to give you a welcome. So Mr. Theo Ngongeng, uh, take it away. Thank you so much, Matt. Thank you yes, so yes. much. Appreciate it. Uh, welcome. Welcome, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Welcome back to the ones who have uh, been with us since uh, last night. And welcome to the rest of uh, the community here. Um, I hear it's extremely warm outside, so I do appreciate uh, your making the effort to actually being inside and uh, being with us here in this very important uh, endeavor. Um, again, like uh, was stated earlier, my name is Theo Ngongrong. I'm the deputy director here at Baltimore City Department of Transportation. Um, this project is extremely important for us. This project is one of the mayor's top transportation priorities. And we all um, have high expectations for the results um, of what we are embarking upon right now. Um, as a way of background, many of you probably know that a little bit over two years ago, we did receive a bike grant from the state for about $450,000, really um, including everything in our local match as well. This was to really advance this project up to, from conceptual phases up to 30% design. Um, subsequently, we did receive $1.5 million also from the state to really focus on the northern segment of uh, this um, Greenway Trails Network. So this is um, an incredible, incredible opportunity for us to advance uh, the multimodal efforts in our city. Uh, we count on you. Uh, we're here to listen tonight, and uh, we hope to make this a productive meeting. Um, as it was also stated earlier, this is the second meeting, uh, uh, part of a series of three meetings. The third one is happening tomorrow night. We're excited to have you here and we are ready to go. We have the team, we have the money, so we are good to go. I'm gonna now turn this over to Melissa. All right, thanks Theo. Welcome back everybody. If you were here with us last night, some of this is gonna look a little familiar to you, but we are jumping over to a new section. So bear with us on the material that's a little bit similar. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, welcome, welcome, we're excited to have you. Uh, this is actually the second meeting in our series of four for this project. In this project, we are taking our design to 30%. Matt will talk more about what that means later, but just wanted to remind everybody that there's plenty of opportunities to chat with your project team, um, with the folks at the city before this actually goes in the ground. So stay tuned and stick with us through the process. So tonight, here we are on Zoom again, welcome back. So a couple rules for us tonight, um, everyone is muted right now. So please remain muted while we are in the larger room. We will be going into breakout rooms in a bit and that's when you guys will be able to raise your hands. You'll get called on, please unmute yourselves and chat with your neighbors, with the folks from the city, with the folks from our team, because uh, we really are interested to hear what your thoughts are on the subject matter this evening. If you are on your phone, to unmute, you'll hit star six. And if you would like to raise your hand, you will hit star nine. So don't forget if you're on your cell phone and you pushed mute on your cell phone, that you'll also need to unmute yourself there if you would like to chat with us. I'm going to read to you some contact information for other ways to get in touch with us. So stay tuned for that. Um, and tonight, let's just you know keep it friendly. Keep it all about the community. We're looking forward to listening to you folks. 
Um, if you have a question while we're talking in this first bit and would like to send a chat to the project team, the host, the people at the city, you're welcome to use the chat. We'll receive that. We'll be reading your chats and we'll answer some of those as the evening goes on. And what we don't get to tonight, we will get to um, through posting some information on our website. Tonight's recording will be posted on the website probably within about 72 hours of our last meeting. So you, your family, friends, colleagues will be able to go to the website, pull that up and watch this with everyone else. All right. So tonight's agenda, pretty similar to last night's if you were with us. So welcome and introductions. Welcome, welcome. We're going to talk a little bit about what has been done with this project before. So Matt will be sharing that with us. And then Serena is going to talk a little bit about our first meeting, not in this series last night, but the first public meeting that we had as a part of this project. And then I'll jump into what we're here to talk about tonight. So again, we're taking one chunk of this northern segment of the Greenway, and we're going to dive into what that might look like. Uh, so after I present to you guys a few of the solutions we've been thinking about and some design ideas, then we'll jump into breakout rooms, and that's when you guys get to chat with each other. And then we'll pop out, we'll do a little bit of an activity and live voting, and then we'll talk about next steps and get you guys either out to this warmer weather or to dinner. All right. So um, like I said, there's opportunities to chat with us tonight. There's a lot of folks in the room. We want to make sure as many people can chat with us as possible. But if for some reason you're having trouble unmuting or you don't get a chance to raise your hand and chat with us um, or we don't answer your chat um, in the chat box tonight, then here are a few ways that you can get in touch with us. And that's not just tonight. Next week, this is until we're wrapping up this project. So a few things I'm going to read to you right now are going to be Matt's email address. So any comments you have tonight, if we have a survey for you and the answer you want is not there, or you want to discuss something that is not a topic tonight, please send Matt an email. I'll read that to you now. So that, Matt, that email is dot-c-o-m-m-u-n-i-t-y at B-A-L-T-I-M-O-R-E-C-I-T-Y dot G-O-V. So that's D-O-T dash community at Baltimore City dot gov. You can also visit our website at www dot B-A-L-T-I-M-O-R-E G-R-E-E-N-W-A-Y dot C-O-M. And that is www.baltimoregreenway.com. And then if you'd like to go directly to our contact form on the website, that one is www.baltimoregreen. W A Y dot C O M forward slash C O N T A C T. So that one is www dot Baltimore Greenway dot com forward slash contact. And then if you'd like to pick up the phone and leave a voicemail at Matt's office, not his cell phone, as I previously suggested last night, <laughs> that number for Matt's office is 443-984-4095. So one more time, that one is 443-984-4095. So that contact information should be coming to you in the chat a couple times tonight. Uh, we'll flash up this screen again, but I just wanted to read it one time to make sure that all of you folks on the phone have that information in case you are scribbling down as I was saying it. All right. So as we said before, your feedback is imperative to getting this project done, right? We really need to hear from you guys. You folks are the people who live in the neighborhood, drive down these streets, walk down these streets, bike down these streets, you eat, you dine, you shop. You know, we really need to hear from you all. So one of the ways that we're going to do that tonight, so it's a little bit interactive and we can see what everyone's thinking and taking your temperature, 
um, is we're going to use a tool called Slido. So I'm going to be bringing up a practice question in Slido in just a moment. So you can access this by using your computer, using your tablet or your cell phone and visiting www.slido.com. So we're going to practice this. And another way to get to slido.com, if you have a smartphone or your tablet and the camera function, you can use your camera. If you're watching with us tonight, you can take a picture of this QR code, this pixely square thing on your screen, and that should take you to the website. Alternately, if you have just typed in slido.com, you can put the number in to get to our survey and the number for our survey tonight is 358-609. All right, so hopefully as I've stalled through telling you all how to get to slido.com, you are there with us and ready for our first question. So this one's just practice. Um, I promise we are not making ice cream for you, but tonight's practice question is, what is your favorite ice cream topping? So if you're with us in the survey, you should see Jimmy's, they're not Jimmy's, they're sprinkles. I'm not sure what your preference is. Uh, hot fudge and caramel is there as well. Maybe you are lactose intolerant and ice cream is not for you. That is an option. And then of course there is other, if you prefer things like brownies or cookie dough, up to you. So it looks like we've got a few folks in there and filling this out. Hopefully everybody's getting a feel for it. Um, as you can see, when we're chatting later and we have a question for you all, you kind of see it in real time. Uh, but this is not the only way that you can give us feedback tonight. Uh, we're going to be bringing up a story map that we will give you a link to. It's like going to a website. Our question tonight will also be on there and it will also be on the website later for you all to access. So looks like hot fudge is the winner. So I'm going to keep going. Um, good choice, everyone and caramel. And it looks like um, Jimmy's is not the fan favorite way to say that. So I think we're sprinkles. All right. So let's keep on going. We're going to get to the topic at hand. Um, so your feedback is very critical. We have said that. Um, so the fourth month of the year happens to be April. This says 4-8. That will be when we are closing public input on this bit. So the story map that you'll see tonight will remain open until April 8th. Again, uh, please visit the website, pass that along to your family and friends. Please use the story map to participate or those other ways to get in touch with us, which will be the email address and the phone number as well. All right, so I'm flashing this up just one more time in case you guys were jotting down contact information and maybe didn't catch the end of something. Um, again, use the contact form on the website. You know, Please let us know. There's multiple ways for you guys to get in touch with us. And we're looking forward um, to that. So I see in the chat that someone wants the code for Slido again. And I, before we get into our uh, topics, I'll read that back to you when we get into our official question. If anyone needs it again, when we get there, just let me know and I'll jump back and I'll read it back to you guys. All right. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in, Matt, to what has been done in the past. All right. Uh, thanks, Melissa. Um, so just want to describe kind of one, what this project is all about, what the vision is, and kind of what this phase of the project is about, and how we are going to be moving forward uh, with this project. So one, um, we're looking at a, a small piece, or I should say a larger piece of uh, the Baltimore Greenway Trail Network that we've called the Northern Segments. That's highlighted in orange. Um, that is, uh, 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 again, a larger piece of uh, a 35 mile vision for the entire Greenway Trail network. Currently, we have 25 miles of Greenway trails within the city, um, which, uh, again, I think we, most of us have experienced this, whether in Gwynn's Falls, Jones Falls, or the Herring Run, uh, the Middle Branch, or the Inner Harbor. Um, there are just, uh, you know, amazing, it's just an amazing amenity that this city has um, that connects uh, people to places, to parks, um, and all uh, kind of the great destinations uh, that the city of Baltimore has to offer. Um, so, um, you know, we're looking to kind of fin finalize and close out 
those gaps within those existing 10 miles that are remaining to kind of make those trail connections. Um, but this is the largest remaining gap within this trail network. This is over six miles, um, which is uh, it's, it's quite a lot. And it, you know, we're dealing with a lot of different neighborhoods, a lot of different institutions, spaces, places, and people. So uh, for this phase, um, what we've decided to do is break this out um, because it is such a large segment into three different sections. Last night, we explored the Western section from Leakin Park to Druid Hill Park. And tonight we're gonna be discussing the section from essentially Hopkins at Charles Street to Lake Montebello and to the Herring Run um, this evening. Tomorrow we'll be looking at the smallest section, that kind of piece between uh, Charles Street and then Druid Hill Park where we have an existing trail already and we're tying into that connection. So uh, that is kind of the larger vision of the Baltimore Greenway Trail Network and the Northern segments. But what does that mean? So what is it? So uh, one, uh, I just kind of wanted to point out the feel of kind of a trail um, is much different. And again, if you've experienced uh, walking or exercising around Lake Montebello, uh, walking through Herring Run or Gwen's Falls, um, you kind of recognize it, it, a different feel than kind of being on street, right? Um, it's definitely separated. You kind of have more of a sidewalk feel. There's more landscaping there's trees and green space. Um, it's much wider than your normal, typical sidewalk, right? Um, and so uh, we, we have the opportunity to not only make this connection, um, but we also have um, the opportunity to kind of invest in other kind of community amenities like playgrounds and benches, um, connecting people to transit. Um, and it really is just a, a, a really unique space for people to connect with the city um, and kind of you know, be in more touch with this city um, with all, you know, all that Baltimore has to offer. And we're not alone as far as um, investing in trails. Um, we've seen this throughout the country and other places. And it really has, you know, not only spurred investment, um, but really kind of created, you know, better spaces for people to live and increase kind of our quality of life. Um, again, for uh, not only green space, um, but for kind of our way of life. And not only is it kind of a quality of life feature, um, it also kind of has these kind of tangible, more tangible metrics and tracking uh, that really equates to in increasing kind of the city's economy, um, not just in literally jobs and creating this, um, then also kind of the access to, uh, you know, spending um, kind of tax benefits, property value benefits, um, and then kind of the other benefits of sustainable and active transportation reducing our carbon footprint, um, you know, including, you know, reducing, uh, you know, pollution, uh, more sustainable. Um, these numbers here, and again, there's many here to read off, uh, was part of the Greater Washington Partnership, um, uh, a study done by Ernst & Young. Um, and so we kind of really have, can see the actual metrics of what uh, realizing this full 35 mile Greenway network can provide. And again, it's not just economic benefits um, or personal benefits. It really kind of impacts our way of life uh, regarding our health and our access to health. Um, and I think it's really important um, when we think of, you know, living in a pandemic now and our access to green space and park space, um, the opportunities for us to be active, to be healthy, uh, not just for our, our bodies, but for our minds as well. So again, a lot of kind of tracking uh, uh, benefits, um, as well as kind of the quality, let's just say the qualitative and the quantitative. Um, all right. So, uh, to get to this point, there has been a lot of work done. Um, you know, we are as a city, part of a, a larger, uh, Greenway trail network coalition, um, kind of the basis of, and foundation of that was in 2016 in a, a, a parallel process uh, done by rails to trails, um, in 20 in kind of finalized in 2018. Um, we've kind of taken a lot of that foundation work with us into this, um, but this is a, a new uh, and original process from the city from start to finish. So I just wanted that to be clear. Um, as Theo mentioned, we have received state funding for this. Um, this is a bikeways grant uh, for four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars, and then we've continued to leverage that into further opportunities through the state, um, along with kind of the city investments. 
Um, and of course, this is a, a commitment to equity. There's over 75 neighborhoods, um, diverse neighborhoods throughout the city of Baltimore that will be impacted by realizing this 35 mile vision. And of course, that is a, an important priority for the mayor uh, and Mayor Scott in not only his administration's big picture, but also for his transportation vision um, and kind of commitment to complete streets and multimodal transportation. Um, and again, what that does is unlock so much, um, you know, open space and green space and access to recreation. And again, uh, this is this particular project is going to from zero to concept development to 30 percent design. And uh, let's talk about what that actually means. So uh, the 30 percent design is kind of, again, working with you all to kind of to work through what our actual routing and design will look like, building consensus, hearing from you, and then kind of putting that into that feedback into actual design plans where we'll kind of finalize our concepts and hone in on a route and uh, design ideas. Um, this is part of four rounds of community engagement. We had one first session in the, the summer of last year, um, which was citywide. We really wanted to open up to the public for them to know about the project, understand what a Greenway Trail is, kind of understand the examples and hear what your priorities are. We've incorporated that into this next wave of meetings, which we will kind of now start to advance these alternatives and designs. So we're having three meetings this week in this second phase of outreach. And then there will be two more touch points for you all to get involved in the summer where we'll take back what we've heard in this phase and then kind of have some initial designs up to 15%. So we'll be halfway there. And then the final piece will then be representing back to the public uh, after we've dialed in uh, from that third phase, hearing back from you and then finishing up that 30% design. And I think that that's kind of the roadmap uh, for what we just discussed. Um, again, this is still early on in this process. We have a lot more engagement to do. Um, and so this is ongoing and we appreciate you being here and taking the time to give us your feedback. Um, once we get to 30% design, and that will be towards the end of this year, well, then we still have a lot more to go, right? So we'll kind of have finalized that concept and design um, but then we have a lot of work to do as far as around intersection treatments, some really going into depth and detail around the kind of environmental and engineering reviews. And again, kind of coordinating kind of on the ground um, what that would need, to, what needs to be done to make sure that this is a safe and again, wonderful facility for the city. And I guess that's my piece. So thank you guys for being here. I'm gonna turn it over uh, to Tarena now so you can hear what we discussed in the first meeting. And thank you all again, appreciate it. Good evening, everyone. Uh, so like Matt mentioned, we did have one larger uh, public meeting on this project. Um, and in that meeting, we gathered feedback from participants uh, we did an overview of what the trail network would and could look like, um, what the limits were for the project that we were embarking on, um, and we wanted to have a discussion with the community around the entire uh, loop that shared their vision goals, um, and we provided some other examples as well. In that meeting, we also talked about some of the desired benefits, uh, you know, what community folks felt like they would gain from um, this kind of a trail network. And on the screen, you'll see some of those examples. There were four breakout rooms. So these are actual common trends that came up in each of those rooms. Um, for those on the phone, a couple of those benefits were improved safety, greater connectivity, complete streets, and preservation of corridors. The meeting also went over some community enhancements, um, things that the community thought would also, again, like just make it a nicer place for them to live and play. Um, those things were safer streets, protected bike lanes, traffic calming, 
and bikeability, just a few of the key things that were brought up in the breakout sessions. With any project, of course, there were also concerns. There were environmental concerns, maintenance, parking, connectivity, um, as well as safety. I'm sorry if I mentioned that one already, but we, we heard people's concerns as well. We even talked to residents about how they prefer to hear information about the project as things went on. Of course, we were living in the, the peak probably of the pandemic at that time. So we were more focused on doing virtual meetings, but we also heard folks say they wanted to hear from us via email and also in person, of course, when it was safe. Two other responses we got included things like canvassing and um, hybrid meetings that were in person and virtual. What's the summary of the fir that first meeting? Um, we sought to, to find a balanced solution. We wanted to hear about the support and the concerns, of course, for this project. And we wanted to establish a criteria. What, what are the trade-offs here? Um, no one's gonna get everything they want in any project, but what are those things that we're willing to give a little to gain a little? And, and some of those things included things like comfort and then trail user and motor vehicles, um, safety, uh, overall connectivity, and so and also parking and transit impact. These are things people what, talked about how they wanted more of or needed less of and, and just where was that balance gonna be found? All right, so uh, for those of you who were with us last night, here's the new stuff. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, what that segment that we're working on tonight. So we really are looking um, on North Charles Street, or excuse me, from North Charles Street to Herring Run Park, so around Lake Montebello. And a big chunk of that is on 33rd. So how do we get from here to there? So tonight, like we did last night, we're going to look at some cross sections. And that is what it looks like when we slice through a piece of the street and we start to look at what that feels like from left to right. So I don't have every slice of 33rd here, but I've got one piece of it. And we're going to show you how that might look in a few different ways. So if you look at the cross section that is on the top right of my screen, the entire night we are going to be looking east toward Lake Montebello. So hopefully this doesn't move too fast for anybody or get weird. Um, but when we're looking at the section, the northern side of 33rd Street is actually going to be on your left and the southern side of the street is on your right. So we've picked a slice of pie from the street. Um, that is kind of one section that I'll show you in just a minute. And then we're going to show it in a couple different ways. So First, I want to tell you that the way that you can give us feedback tonight and tomorrow, if you want to save your thoughts for tomorrow and how you can push this out to your friends, is going to be a story to that. If you were with us last night, you know that it's just a website. Um, Mike, if you'll help me out later, you'll be putting that link in the chat for everybody. So stay tuned for the link, guys. Um, but you can click on that and it's really easy to navigate. I'll show you in just a second. You just simply scroll down and the more you scroll, you go through a series of images and a series of maps that you can zoom in and out of. So tonight, a little bit different from last night, I'm going to show you in presentation format a few things um, and we'll switch back and forth because we heard that you guys wanted a little clarification last night. So we've made a couple adjustments tonight. So again, I'm going to walk you through everything in the story map. Um, and then you guys would go into your breakout rooms and you can discuss. And that's when Mike will pass out the link. So I thought we would just talk a bit about this section before I show the story map tonight to talk about what's going on around 33rd Street. So there's some, some projects that are already going on, some things that are in the works and some things that are already out there. I mean, you guys know that you live here. 
So let's just talk a little bit about North Charles Street. So the Johns Hopkins campus is going through a remaster planning process, and there are some things that we're doing to coordinate with them to figure out what is the safest way to get from Art Museum Drive up North Charles Street. So that's kind of in the works right now. We're not diving deep into that tonight, uh, but you know, stay tuned as that evolves because that coordination is in progress. The next section I wanted to chat a little bit about is that existing path on 33rd. So there's that little segment that you all probably know of with the path that goes down the medium. So this is what that looks like at the intersection if you have not been out there lately. So you've got your brick sidewalks, the median kind of breaks at sidewalk level so you can pass through it. And then there is a path in the center. So right now what that looks like is it's a series of gray pavers. It's in the middle. Um, you can see that there's some new vegetation there. So this is relatively new, but just for that little piece. As you move further toward Lake Montebello, um, there is a little bit of bike lane that leads into a newly painted, um, beautifully colored intersection. So you'll see that the intersection is tightened a little bit. There are some connections to adjacent bikeways. And so that's what that end looks like. So really what we want to do is we want to make sure that we coordinate and we connect and we respond to the projects that are in process and the things that are out there today. So if you were to cross over that intersection and go into Lake Montebello, uh, what that looks like is a lovely path um, where there is no car access anymore around that immediate loop around the lake. And so both sides of this vegetated median right here are open to people walking and biking. So we don't need to dive into that section tonight either. Um, so we're really just kind of looking at that 33rd piece, which is the gap of where we're missing some trail. So we need to find some space for people to walk and bike. So this is what that roadway looks like today. So as a reminder, as we get into looking at cross sections and looking at design, I wanted to make a point that we are building a trail. We are not doing bike lanes. We are not doing a cycle track. Um, this is for walking and biking and strolling and dog walking and really becoming a part of that Greenway network in our city. So we want to be consistent with serving our 8 to 80 population. We want to be ADA accessible, and we want to make sure that this really does feel like that trail experience. So to kick us all off for what's going on on 33rd, we took a slice of the street that's kind of more in our residential area, even though we know we have campus and a little bit of commercial area. Uh, we took a little slice here. So you can see on either side, we have houses. Uh, you can see how there's a slope and some steps up to folks' houses on either side. But as we're looking toward Lake Montebello, essentially we have sidewalk on both sides of the street. We have two lanes in either direction, the inside lane being a through lane and those outside lanes near the sidewalk are sometimes through lanes and off-peak parking, and then sometimes always parking, depending on where you are in the slice of the pie of the street. And then for the most part on 33rd, we have a median that's about 40 feet wide. And for the most part, the trees are kind of skirting the edge of this median. So that's what we're starting with when we start to look at design solutions and what this may look like. So later, when you are in your story map, you're going to see some cross sections. So I'm going to click into the story map now so you guys can see how that works. So um, you will, when you go to the website, you'll probably start out at the top of the story map, which says, welcome. Last night, we worked on the Gwens Falls Parkway section, and tonight we're looking at 33rd. So if you click at the top on 33rd, you'll come to this map here that you can click and drag and move around. Uh, you can zoom into this guy with the plus and minus buttons, and you can just navigate around this, zoom in, see more street names. As you can see, here we are on Hopkins campus. And then as we're moving toward the east, you know, we do have that commercial section. Um, and then it um, gets pretty residential on both sides of the street. So it's a little different as we go down. So 
We have five options tonight that we're looking at that I will show you, and then you'll check out in your breakout rooms. So the first one is alternative 1A. And so the A's usually have the path in the greenway on the north side of the street, and the B's are usually on the south side. So in 1A, what we're doing is you can see the greenway here. Um, you can see your sidewalks in light gray on either side of the street that are consistent. And what we've done is we've taken that outside lane, that lane that's closer to the sidewalk, and we are going to raise that up to sidewalk level to create our trail. So we've taken that lane space, raising it up to sidewalk level, it is out of the street. We maintain the flow with that one lane of traffic and that is where our trail goes. So that is 1A. So you just simply to open these up, you click one time, to close them, click one time. So I'm just gonna scroll down with my mouse. You can also use your trackpad to scroll down and it will bring up the next alternative. So the next one is 1B. One, because it's very similar. B, because we're now on the south side of the roadway. So as you can see here, a very similar recommendation. We are taking that greenway space. Uh, we're going to use that outside lane again, which is now um, sometimes parking, sometimes through lane. Again, we're going to raise that up to sidewalk level to create our trail. So option one is using those outside lanes. A is on the north side, B is on the south side. So I'll just click through again, and then we're going to get to option two. So option two is that median running greenway. So that is maintaining the connection and consistency with what is already on 33rd, and then pulling that down the rest of the street until we get to that Lake Montebello intersection where we'll have to cross over. Um, so that is your center running, your median running greenway. That was two. So now I will get into option three, which again, there is an A and a B. So what we are doing in option three A is A being on the north side, we're going to use the lane closest to the median, expand the median, rise that up to median level or sidewalk level and put our trail in that space. And so you can probably guess with the pattern and where I'm going with this is that a three B would be to use that space on the south side of the roadway. So again, here is our greenway trail at median level, rising up, um, and then putting in our trail on, like I said, that south side. So I am going to go ahead and have Mike put the link to the story map in the chat. And let's talk a little bit about these breakout rooms really quickly. So what we want to do, we have um, a bunch of you in the room today. So I think there's over 100 people with us this evening. And we want to try to make sure that as many of you get a chance to speak as possible. So when you go into your room, I think you'll be muted when you get in there. And if you would please raise your hand, then one of our facilitators can call on you. So our, our rules of engagement for tonight is to please take about 30 seconds to either ask a question or have a comment, and then that will give our team an opportunity to respond to you, and then for your next community member to go ahead and either respond to you or ask another question. So um, if you all don't mind, let's try to be as polite and equitable about everyone getting a chance to speak as we can. Um, try to encourage your neighbors who might be quiet to talk, and let's make sure that we get around the room tonight and get as, as much input as we can from as many folks as we can. Okay, team, did I forget anything before we go into breakout rooms? All right, so just in a moment, Mike will send us all into the breakout rooms, have your discussion in there, and then when you come back, uh, Mike will post the link to the Slido and the code for the Slido. And we will answer the question of which of these sections you prefer for 33rd. All right, team, are you ready? Okay, let's go. We'll see you guys in the breakout rooms. Okay, so uh, with that, let me see who has hands raised. Just to add to Oscar's statements, we, we ask that you use the raise hand function so that we can identify you. And then you can unmute yourself 
and, and state your comment or question or concern. Um, we do ask that you keep that around like 30 second ish because we do have so many people in the room and we want to try to get around to as many comments and questions as possible. So again, just let's be respectful of one another and we'll try to move through this quickly. But if there are questions that are outstanding, we will find a way in time to address them. Thank you, Tarina. So uh, uh, Peter Griffith, if you want to unmute yourself and... Hi, everybody. Um, first, thanks to um, all of the folks that are putting this uh, series on. Uh, very well done. Um, kudos on that. Um, I'm not a resident of, of this uh, section uh, of the road. Um, I'd like to be able to access um, sort of the Jones Falls uh, to Lake uh, Montebello Quarter. And I'm aware that a lot of people who do live in this section would be very concerned about losing parking. Um, I know what a big deal parking is. So I'm wondering about you know, where I would weigh in on this. If uh, putting the trail through the median, can that be done in a, in a way uh, that does not, um, there we go, exactly that one. That's what I would vote for if I were confident that it wouldn't kill the trees and sort of destroy the green space of the median itself. So if, uh, if any of the designers could comment on, on that and give me some uh, idea of what the impact of having the trail in the, in the median, median would be. Right. Um, so, uh, uh, Trina, feel free to you know to uh, uh, jump in. Um, my understanding is uh, that most of the, the the trees are on the kind of like on the edges of the median. So, having the 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 trail in the center will kind of like minimize the impact. Um, I'm, I'm not I'm not sure if there's any any trees that will be impacted by having the median uh, the the trail in the median. But but all I know is that the, the majority of the trees are on the on the edges. I don't know, uh, Tarina, if you want to add something to that? Just, uh, uh, you're pretty, that's pretty correct, Aska. There, of course, uh, there's going to have to be some level of removal, but in the designs, there, the plan would include, very, you know, minimal removal and, and, and then also replacement of said trees. Like if there just has to be a situation where trees are then placed somewhere else, additional trees on the sidewalk, um, things to still restore the tree canopy um, and the integrity of the median as much as possible, but there there will be some loss and th there could be some other gains, but there's no way to avoid total um, avoidance of removals. Correct. Thank you, Tarina. Uh, Phil Glazer, if you want to unmute yourself, please. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, I have one comment and one question. Um, I think for either of the plans, let's see, I think that's uh, one, both, both of those and three, which the, the ones that, that take a lane of travel, the current lane of travel, um, unless there is, so, you know, we can see in these plans that there is, there's buffer between lanes of travel and sidewalk. Um, so unless there is a similar sort of buffer between lanes of travel and where people are meant to be, you know, the greenway navigating by foot and, uh, bicycle, um, then it seems to me like it will feel, uh, more or less as unsafe as riding a bicycle in the lanes of travel, uh, feels currently. Um, so yeah, there, there, Granted, there there'd be a curb in this case, but I think uh, uh, ha not having the buffer between between you and cars that are moving uh, would feel less certainly less safe than walking on a sidewalk. Um, uh, so well, that's my comment. I'm and then my sorry. question. Yes. Go ahead. No, you have a question. Yeah. Or do you want me to take that first piece? Uh, I, I I'll just finish with my question, okay. and then I'll. Uh, yeah. My question for the uh, median plan, uh, number two, is how would intersections be handled? Uh, would there be dedicated signaling for pedestrians uh, and bicycles? Um, I know there are, there are um, 
the streets like Lock Raven and the Alameda that have left turn uh, arrows for cars. So I'm just wondering how traffic, pedestrian traffic, will be controlled in those cases. Okay, so I guess I'll jump in and start with the first piece of your comment. Um, of course, we are showing race crosswalk as a part of this. I'm sorry, race trails as a part of the design. Um, there is some separation included in that. What we're focusing on tonight would be the alternatives. Within those alternatives that are selected to advance, we are going to take a look at all those other aspects. So there's like, first, we want to know how folks want it to feel um, in terms of the route. And then the next phase of this, we will get into many of those details that you're asking about right now. But yes, there is consideration for not only raised uh, pavement, but also separation. Whether that, what that looks like will be defined throughout the process. Oscar, you have anything to add? Um, no, no. Uh, so uh, moving on, uh, Chris, you have your, raise, your hand raised. If you want to mute yourself, please. Hey, everyone. Uh, thanks for putting this presentation on. I think I'm probably most in favor of, of number two, the median greenway that you've got up on the screen right now. Um, I do like the, uh, the fact that it is buffered from traffic. Um, I think maybe most importantly is just going through that Green Mount commercial section, there's a lot of driveways and curb cuts um, along the sides. So it'd be good to have uh, the trail in the middle just for safety reasons to avoid all those turning conflicts. Uh, I think that'd be a lot nicer ride. Um, I think I'd be okay with uh, 3A, 3B to, as well. Um, but it, I kind of like the last speaker. Um, it'd be nice to have a nice buffer between traffic. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, Brian Windle, if you want to unmute yourself, please. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks. Um, I also echo the concerns about the uh, buffer and appreciate that uh, for plans one and three, that uh, the buffer between the um, car travel lanes and the um, path would be taken into consideration if, if either of those plans move forward. Um, I do also, um, I, I live right off 33rd Street and um, I support plan number two. Um, and I just want to say like uh, paths like these, uh, the Greenway are, are great for everyone, not just people that um, ride bikes. Uh, it can be for people with disabilities, scooters, walking, everything. So um, thank you. And um, I support plan number two. Thank you. Uh, next, Jill Warzer, if you want to unmute yourself, please. Yes, um, I want to point out that three years ago, a group of us heard that this was in the planning stage and came to a meeting called by Mary Pat Clark in the Waverly Community Center. And we looked at all these plans and we went out measuring measure the, the medians at different spots along 33rd. And I want to say that I think representing it as 40 feet wide in most places is a misrepresentation. And we, um, the group, we discovered going door to door on 33rd Street that no, none of the residents that we met knew about this. And I'm wondering if you've gone door to door, if the residents who live on 33rd Street know that this has gone beyond the just imaginary stage into the planning stage. Um, Anthony McCarthy held a forum about this on, um, on WEAA a few weeks ago, and they couldn't even answer all the calls that came in. It was a, a storm of calls that came in. And I have to say most people were really angry about what's already been done with the bike um, trails on 33rd Street, the posts, what's been done at the corner of um, Hillid at 33rd, 32nd, where that intersection is. A bus driver called in to comment that he didn't have enough room to make his bus through that intersection and that he had knocked over a couple of the um, posts and been fined because it was considered an accident. 
and also a, a, a mobility driver said that these, these tr things are making it impossible for her to safely board and disembark people um, at their homes. So this process and having all of this on Zoom and people having to comment, you know, using an electronic means um, is really not inclusive. I live right near Lake Montebello. I've lived here since 1999. The 33rd Street is not wide enough to do all this. Also, at that time, an independent arborist that we consulted with who had worked as an arborist for the city said, if you try to put a trail down 33rd Street, you're going to disturb the roots of those Dutch elm trees um, and they will most likely die. So the way this is being presented, I feel it's really being misrepresented. The process is not inclusive. I hadn't heard anything more about this until recently when I heard on the um, Anthony McCarthy um, show. And I, I really feel like this is being railroaded through. At that time, we suggested people look at alternative uses like 34th Street, which is, doesn't have this kind of traffic. Um, we look, look at safer alternatives to helping students cross through these neighborhoods from, to Mervo or to Lake Montebello School or to City. And none of this is being considered. Um, and I, I, I have to say, you can tell that I'm, I'm quite perturbed and I am not the only one. I can tell you the people calling into that show that night are really upset about it. And I okay, find it know, myself. I, I, appreciate. I, I come in and out of this neighborhood at least once a day. I used to ride bikes everywhere. You know, I rode them growing up in New York. I rode them growing up in Vermont, up and down mountains. I, I rode them in Monaco. No, I'm sorry, honey. I, I really, really, but I'm not opposed I, to bikes. The, we the we, we have to, and we the have plans, to give people another um, chance to to speak. Uh, Joe, yeah. all your comments are received, but this uh, this room is time. So I just, you know, that's why we ask people to kind of keep it around thirty seconds, and we can have additional dialogue. Oscar, you want to? Can you take the first part of that, and then um, you know we want to move through sure. this and give other folks a Absolutely. chance as well. Yes, uh, but we're not we'll, ignoring you. We we'll definitely can come back to you if yes. everything isn't addressed tonight. Right, uh, Tommy Wolski, please unmute yourself. Hi. Um, I was kind of wondering if uh, any of the engineers or um, designers on this project could uh, provide us with some of the, um, the benefits and uh, drawbacks of each of the al alternatives um, from, from their point of view. Adriana, uh, you want me to take that one or? Yeah, Oscar, if you could, and, and Jill, if you're able to use the chat function, if you can just highlight a few of those things for me so I can circle back and make sure we follow up with your stuff too. Right, so um, in terms of uh, the design, the, uh, I mean, the, the difference between alternative 1A and 1B having its uh, north and south, uh, I think in, in my opinion, it would, uh, the main difference will reside in the number of uh, conflicts that you may encounter on one side versus the other. And by conflicts, I mean driveways, entrances, intersections. Uh, so that's that's one thing that would have to be uh, considered. Uh, in terms of the the uh, having the, the 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 trail on on the median, I think it it's, uh, it, it provides the the the. It's a separation uh, that you know that it probably gives more of a natural setting since you'll probably be riding or walking uh, between uh, uh, you know trees, the canopy of the trees. It'll be shaded, uh, but then uh, you know the the the, uh, the potential impact to trees is is uh, you know is is uh, is a reality. Um, and then three uh, A and three B uh, again, like uh, I, I think that. Uh, Maybe the, the how you navigate around intersections may be maybe a, a thing to consider. Uh, 
but uh, I think uh, you know all the designs have considered different. Uh, you know, all the uh, safety and comfort are, are always kind of like put on put on uh, as a priority for for the design. So um, that's in a nutshell. I think uh, kind of like the 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 the, the the information I, I, can, I can provide. Dorena, you want to add something to that? Nope, I just want to make sure if we have a think about seven other people trying sure. to say, you know, leave a comment. So let's just move, keep moving through. All right, sounds good. Uh, so moving on, uh, Pat Yevix, please unmute yourself. Hi, how's everybody? Um, I've lived in Edna Garden since 1986. I know this as a long distance runner, I've run the marathon. I know this area really well. And of all the choices, in my opinion, it um, the one up the middle of the uh, medium is by far, in my opinion, the best. Yes, some trees are gonna suffer, but trees are gonna suffer anyway. Um, it gives us could give us an opportunity to put in stronger and newer trees. Um, I think it's going to be safer for people. Um, not being that close to the road, I don't care how high you put up those uh, portions towards the sidewalk, it could be pretty unsafe. I, in fact, I walk there about three, four days a week. I walked there this morning um, in that area and. It's loaded with trash right now. So maybe this will help to keep it neater. And I think this is long overdue. And I think this would be a great opportunity to really build community um, here. I've lived here since 86 uh, in Ender Gardens. And I think, this is a, I think this is a great idea. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Uh, Jason, please unmute yourself. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the opportunity um, to provide feedback. I'm excited about the second option with the median um, in terms of safety for walking okay. and biking. Sorry, that's my son. And um, also just in the spirit of a Greenway trail, being between the trees, I think, um, would be much more appealing than on the side of a road. Um, in a lane. So that's my opinion. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Chris Billick, please unmute yourself. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm calling in to support the, the median option. Um, I'm a resident of Charles Village. I'm also a professional civil engineer um, with a background in smart growth. Um, this sort of echo Jill's concerns about it not being 40 feet along the whole of 33rd, I would actually support taking more room from the cars um, as much as as much as possible. Um, it'll help pedestrians, bikers. It'll just support uh, uh, the community and the sense of interconnectedness along 33rd and, and the communities adjacent to it. So just calling to support that option. Thanks. Thank you, Chris. Uh, Rihanna. And just as a time check reminder, we have a, about four more minutes left. Um, Jill, I'm still keeping an eye for, for your message if you can get that to me or we can continue to talk offline. But we have four minutes, folks. Thank you. Uh, Rihanna, if you want to unmute yourself, please. Hi, I live on the North Charles Cor uh, Corridor and often we walk around Hopkins and we feel stuck and we go to, we drive to lake, um, to the lake. So this is going to be amazing. So I would say voting for number two here and also echoing what Chris said, if anything, to make it wider. And then my question is um, about safety when we are crossing the streets, if the lights, I think somebody else said this as well, if the lights could be so that only pedestrians can cross, so no cars can turn. Is that being considered? Uh, Trina, do you have information on that? At this point, uh, you know, we have to figure out which which way we're going with this. And then, of course, as it relates to safety measures, we, we want to make sure those things are in place. So I think we can't really get into the weeds of that kind of thing until 
uh, you know, an alternative has been selected. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Deborah, you want to unmute yourself, please? Hi, good evening. Um, so I have some concerns. I'm not, my opinion is I have concerns. One of them, the sidewalks that are going from 30, I'm a resident of Better Waverly, and the sidewalks on both sides of the streets that's going to Montebello, they're all the way and they're wide already. Number two, and I think this came up before when we had that meeting, when Mary Pat had the meeting, going down the, the medium, someone just said tonight that the sidewalks have lots of trash. Who's going to be responsible for cleaning the trash up going down the medium? And I personally feel that this will be creating a dirt bike path. It will happen. It's not um, it's just when, but the dirt bikes will be on that path. So we just need to think about all of those things when we're thinking about going down the middle or the path. I don't think on the side of the road is a good thing because it would take up one lane, but the sidewalks that are Green Mount or maybe even from um, Charles Street down on both sides of the streets in front of people's homes are walkable. That's all I have to say. Thank you, Deborah. Um, so we have about a minute and a half. Uh, Let's circle back to, to Jill's questions. Uh, I, you know, that was there was a lot of things in there, Jill, um, and I didn't want to cut you off. We just wanted to make sure we got around to everyone. So if there's some extra time, we can we can go back to to Jill. Um, let's break that down some. I know there was a conversation before. I think that was before this iteration of the trail network altogether. Um, so I, do, I am aware that that conversation happened with Mary Pat some time ago. We I won't say that. Um, we're further along because essentially what we did was restart. So we're having those conversations now and providing other options that in some cases weren't things that we considered before. Um, we also are allowing for input from residents, from people who use the facilities and things of that nature. And so your points are valid and, you know, they matter to us. So we're, we're taking note of all of this. And it's going to be a part of how decisions are made on how we move forward. So if they, I know that there were a lot of things that you were laying out. I was trying to jot down some notes. Um, but please feel free to reach out to us and share more of your concerns. Thank you, Darina. Uh, I think the, yeah, the breakout room is uh, closing soon. So thank you everybody for your thoughts. Uh, I will uh, pass most of the uh, you know so the summary of, of the of the discussion. I, I will I'll share with the with the main room. So thank you everybody. Hello everybody. We'll give it just a few seconds here to get everybody settled and joining the room. Glad you're with us. And in the chat, I'm going to post the link to the story map. I'll also share my screen pretty soon so that we can have that as a reference uh, and I'll be on the same page in terms of what we're looking at. So I'm seeing pretty steady. We have a 28, about 28 participants here. So um, I'll get started and introduce myself. I'm Colin Hodges. I'm a senior planner with RK K that's helping uh, Baltimore City with the Greenway effort here. So very happy to be part of the team and I'm glad you're all here to join us. Um, Eric, go ahead and introduce yourself. And I'm Eric James. I'm a liaison for Department of Transportation, Baltimore City. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and just uh, have the 33rd Street alternative alignment up um, and just so I can refer to this. Uh, and please, if you'd like, open the link on your computer and browse through it if you want to take a look and also answer the survey question below uh, at the end 
of this uh, scroll through. But at this point, um, Eric, unless you have anything else to add, I think that we could open it up to any comments, questions, um, or anything. And I think what we'd like to do is just, if you have uh, something to say, as Melissa mentioned, just uh, raise your hand in the in the Zoom function, and we'll call on you and give you about thirty seconds, you know, plus or minus, depending on how the conversation goes. So, uh, looks like uh, Matt, go ahead. Yes. Hi. Good evening. Thanks for taking uh, feedback this evening. Uh, just a few comments. I'd like to say that um, I prefer any option that doesn't involve removing the green space down the center of the median. I think that's kind of inconsistent with a greenway trail to remove green space. And it's, I, I made a comment the other night that it's also consistent with um, objectives of Blue Water Baltimore in removing impervious surface. You know, we'd be adding impervious surface, which I think is uh, not ideal. Uh, one more thing, I think it's, uh, I think it would be good if that section on 33rd Street near Hopkins could be made consistent with the entire design so that there's not kind of like an awkward transition at that point of the trail. That's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Um, could you actually repeat real quick the, the last thing you said? Yeah, sure. So that small segment that uh, near Homewood's campus, Hopkins Homewood's campus, that's already kind of down the median. I think it would be important uh, for that to be consistent with the rest of the trail design for this segment, just so that there's not a weird transition that's kind of awkward or difficult to navigate back and forth between one design versus the other. Gotcha. Thank you. That makes sense. That, that has some potential traffic and situations too. But that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And also, just so everybody knows, I don't think I mentioned this, but I'm taking notes, writing down what people are saying, and uh, you know, we'll, we're going to recap with the group um, when we get back, as I believe Ms. Melissa probably mentioned. Um, and you know, I'll just let everybody know, kind of in the sum, what our what our group had discussed and some of the the big points that came out of it. And moving on, looks like Dylan. Hi, yeah, um, I, I have a question. So, in the I guess the A versions. Uh, of the plan, I guess, uh, kind of what we're looking at here is the idea because it's on the north side of the street, but that current bike lane that's right by Montebello is on the south side of the street. Would the idea be if if we go with the if the A version is what's gone with that would kind of become sort of the main like way to pass through, or would you have to then like shift down to the south side to get into the bike lane to cross over? Does that make sense? And uh, what point are you are you talking about? Uh, the transition earlier on um from you... hillen in 33rd like to get across to lake montebello um oh i see because the there's already that itself. bike lane that's there like basically would we remove that bike lane and switch everything to that north side or would or would that remain you know i'm actually not sure about that i don't have a good answer to that question because i don't i'm not sure that the intersection has really been looked at uh as closely as the rest of the alignment so far because we're at a little bit of a higher level um, Eric, do you do you have any information on that? I don't. Not at this time. I don't. Okay. I think it's. I, I, I know exactly what he's talking about, though. Yeah, yeah. Just in thinking of like you know the connectivity, and sometimes I feel like we put in a bike lane or or a lane or something like that, and then you get to an intersection, and all of a sudden it switches to the other side of the street, and so just trying to kind of avoid that outcome. No, that makes yeah, sense. So I think this is consistent with my comment about having no awkward transitions and constant flow and things like that. Just general consistency of design. Yeah, I was going to say that uh, definitely those two comments, I'll definitely note in the breakout room that, or when we come back from the breakout room, to say that making sure the transitions make sense on both ends of the corridor is definitely a priority to make sure that, and I, I know what you mean. I, I've been dropped in some odd intersections where things don't quite make sense. Um, from a transition standpoint. So uh, having that be more intuitive or as intuitive as possible, I think is, is important. So. That's right. And this is Melissa. I just popped in the room. So uh, one of the things that we focus in on are those intersections. We want to make sure that um, there are 
great transitions when we need to make them that we do not switch back and forth across the street if we do not have to. So sometimes uh, the intersections can help push us into making a choice of the north or the south side based on wanting to minimize crossings, uh, provide those safe connections, use signalized crossings that make sense and monitor and adjust the signal timing so that we have either a dedicated phase for the trail crossing um, or something where we can fit in a signalized phase that gives them a, a lead um, in front of the traffic. So thank you for saying that. And that absolutely will influence our design. Great. Thank you. Hey. Yeah. Thanks, Melissa, for some clarification there. Um, moving on to, I believe Megan is next. Oh, thank you. I um, I looked at the <clears throat> schematic, and it struck me that um, the loss of parking for the residents all along from Greenmount, well, actually, residential area starts around Calvert Street, even um, St. Paul. There are people that live on both sides of the street, and I don't know where they would park with anything other than the um, two, number two plan where the trail goes down the middle of the median. And I appreciate what Eric was saying about imperviable surfaces. There are far too many of them and they cause all kinds of problems with our streams and there's no way to fix it. I mean, if you have a lot of runoff, your streams will not behave. They can't handle it. However, um, I have been involved back in the 1970s um, with an organization called Streets for People. Streets for People was a coalition between Charles Village and Mount Vernon to address the problem of commuter traffic zooming up Calvert Street like an expressway. And at that time, there were parking restrictions all along Calvert Street during rush hour. So all of the residents had nowhere to park. They had to move their car every night. And it was just, it was kind of outrageous. So anyway, we all got together when we finally got that change to allow residential parking on Calvert Street 24-7. And that's the way it has been ever since. And that was Streets for People. Now, in those days, I also used to work downtown and bike back and forth in good weather. I would just bicycle up, you know, Guilford Avenue to avoid the madness on Calvert Street. You know, take my time going uphill. Going down wasn't so bad because you could keep up with the traffic. I could keep up with the traffic pretty well in St. Paul. But I do right now want to stand firmly in favor of allowing residential parking on both sides of 33rd Street 24-7. I think anything else is way disrespectful to those people that live there. I don't know if any of them are in our meetings tonight, but boy, if I lived there and I heard you were going to remove the parking, I mean, it's just, it, it makes it really unlivable. I mean, I just, I can't imagine how, how you could live without parking, street parking in front of your house. And people have bought houses there and, and they have a way of life. And I don't think we should take it away from them. I think it's very disrespectful to the people that live there. I, I, I just, I can't imagine how you could contemplate removing all that parking for the residents. Okay. Thank you, Megan. I uh, appreciate the comments. And uh, I have noted that the loss of parking would be an impact to, to the residents. And is that... An, highly uh, detrimental. Highly detrimental. Highly detrimental. Um, it would be... Okay. Yeah. And... and and just so we can, we have a lot of people with their hands raised. I appreciate your comments, Megan, and we'll I'll make sure to bring that up in the when we get back to the main main room. Um, but for now, I would like to move on to Corey, who has had his hand raised for a bit. Yeah, thank you all. <clears throat> thank you all for uh, taking feedback. Uh, I, I uh, personally am a big fan of the uh, pathway option number two, the pathway through the median. Uh, but I, I did find the original or the first comment about, about impervious services very compelling. Uh, and I know the I know the existing short pathway through uh, next to the Hopkins campus has those gray pavers. Uh, I'd like to know if those are impervious today and if the pathway that you all uh, are planning would be kind of just raw asphalt that would be fully impervious or if we would have a more permeable 
um, you know, paver system. Uh, but frankly, I think that's the safest option uh, as someone who bites in the city every day. Uh, being as far away from cars uh, is the best option. Uh, knowing that cars tend to drift or folks are texting and driving or they're hooking fast rights on red without looking uh, to both left and right. Uh, something I experienced just on my commute a few moments ago. Uh, so anything that allows folks to get away from folks turning right on red, running red lights, uh, those type of options, frankly, is the safest option. Uh, probably the most pleasant to be in the shade in the summer because um, Baltimore summers are quite warm. Uh, but if, if that can also be an, uh, a permeable surface, that's uh, all the more better uh, to maintain those environmental benefits uh, while, main, while increasing the safety and the you know, pleasurability of the, of the ride. Great. Thank you, Corey. Um, I have that noted that median path would be preferable uh, in your situation, but also um, if pervious pavers could be provided, that could um, help mitigate the impact of um, adding more impervious service to the city. And I, I don't, I don't personally know if pervious favors have been discussed, uh, that, that could come up at a later, uh, stage of design. Um, no matter where the trail occurs, um, Eric, I don't, do you have, have you had heard any of those discussions at all by any chance? No, I haven't. Okay. So yeah, I think at this point it's a little early to say for sure, but I will bring that up at the, the, the main room just to make sure that's heard. So thanks. Good points. Uh, next, I see K. Dale Terrell. Go ahead. Yes, hi. Thanks for letting me speak. Um, I uh, was just uh, wanted to give my comments. I think if I had to choose, I would choose the median option, the one that's in the median. And um, I was on the meeting call last night, and I was kind of surprised that it wasn't an option in that portion of the Greenway Trail as well. Um, and my comment on why I really like that one is because it seems to me uh, that it would kind of uh, fix or not fix, but uh, it would help all of the issues that have been brought up. One is the reduction of parking and driving lanes would not be affected. And two, it would um, take bikes completely out of the um, equation on the street. Uh, so as someone who drives a lot, I don't want to see lanes taken away or parking spots, but I also bike from time to time, and it would be nice not to have to do that with a bunch of cars. So thanks for letting me speak. I'll let everybody else um, use the rest of the time. Great. Thank you very much. I've noted that. And next we have Jamie Wallace. Go ahead. Hi. Yes, uh, thanks for letting us all um, talk about what we want and need. And um, I'm a resident in Waverly, and um, I personally like um, the option three. Um, I don't have a preference on the north or south. Um, I do like option three because it um, activates the medium a lot more. Um, but I do have a comment about, um, providing buffers. Um, so I'm hoping that, you know, option two, you have the buffer of the trees between, you know, the cars traveling north, uh, east and west, but, um, in the other options, you know, I just hope there's adequate buffers between pedestrians, bikers, and the cars. Um, I live right off of East 33rd. Cars drive um, very fast, very, very fast. I do have a dog um, that I walk and I am also a biker. Um, so it is a concern of mine. Um, um, actually, I, I like to walk my dog in that medium, but um, the the way the cars drive so fast um i don't even like crossing the street and um i will note that um i don't know if this is possible um but that space in the middle that medium is actually not a very inviting space i know we have the site constraints because it is so loud it the 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 traffic sounds are so completely loud. 
I don't know. So it's not like a nice space to be in. And so I worry that um, it wouldn't get any use because of the, the just um, the sound quality. Uh, so, you know, there's, we don't, we can't do anything about that, but I just wonder if there's like um, any kinds of buffers again, to help reduce some of that noise pollution. Um, and that's what I have. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, Jamie, I, I did uh, want to clarify really quickly one thing. Um, you mentioned alternative three, um, or which alternatives were you referring to in the beginning initially, just so I understand. Oh, I, I prefer alternatives three, but I said it's similar to, sorry, my dog, similar to alt to alternatives two, because both of those two and three activate the median space um, and it would be used more as green space. The other option one, um, I f it wouldn't activate the medium space as much, if that makes sense. Got it, yes, I got it now. Thank you, thank you for reiterating. And let's see, moving on to David. Please, uh, please go ahead. Um, hi, thanks for taking feedback like everyone else said. Um, I just wanted to say that I really am excited by Alternative 2 that runs the path down the, the median. Um, I think it's a, a really great asset that Baltimore has that we have all of these greenways designed by the Olmstead Brothers landscape firm, and you see a lot of those around the country, and they're they're beautiful and beloved, you know, in every city that that has them. And a lot of them have this center running path down the median. And if you look at the history, that was actually intended um, for for this space, and it it just didn't end up happening because of um, the different priorities that city leaders had at the time. And I, I would just echo what some other folks have already said, which is that I think that the green space that's there has a lot more potential to be used. Um, you know, I walk and, and bike and have fun all along 33rd Street all the time. And it's so rare that I ever see anybody in that median, um, you know, using it. So I think that whatever happens with this project, it would be really wonderful if um, park benches or other things could be added to the median so it could be a more utilized space by residents. Um, and I think the other benefit of a center running path is that it would bring, it would make the green space much more accessible to people of different abilities. You know, right now, if someone is in a wheelchair or is differently abled, there's no way that they can actually get to that green space and enjoy it. So, I'm just very excited by that potential of of uh, alternative too. Great, thank you, David. Oh, those are some good points there, and uh, so I have that you'd be uh, the support there for the median running greenway um, to utilize the green space and also potentially um, add some additional um, amenities to make that space more usable to people who aren't uh, to residents who are nearby who might not be biking through or walking through as much, um, if they prefer to use the space is also, um, a, kind of a little park space. That's uh, good points there. Thank you. And let's see, I think the next would be Brad. Go ahead, Brad. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Thank you for uh, wanting me to speak. Uh, I too favor, um, uh, alternative two, though I am concerned that, uh, first of all, it may not be as wide as uh, the other alternatives. And I'm also concerned with the uh, the trees that are already along the median. Some of them are very old, and I can't fathom that you'd be able to put this median in without uh, harming those trees. Um, but the other alternatives, you know, just don't seem to suit the uh, concerns of um, residents for parking and also um, for um, the travel lanes. Um, sort of impede on the uh, the biking walking lanes so and there's also i think pervious asphalt that's on the market that could uh, solve the uh, pervious issue thank you uh, okay. good points there and uh in terms of the tree question um 
there, you know, the, the grim median is I'm sure most of you are aware kind of, uh, varies in width, depending on where you are to some extent, um, on it's con relatively consistent, but there are points where it's narrower and, uh, the trees are a little more, uh, vulnerable in those spots potentially, but also the trail would be somewhat within the root. Um, I'm told within the root zone of those trees. So there would have to be a lot of work to make sure that the trees are, are the harm to the trees is minimized. Uh, but that would definitely be a concern in the project and something that, that would be examined thoroughly. Um, so you're correct that that could be an impact. Um, let's see. Next, moving on to Eleni. Hi, I'm a fan of option two or also option three. Um, I think the median option makes it an actual green way. If we want to activate and use green space, that is the way to do it. I understand the concerns about <clears throat> um, impervious surface, but we have the option of semi-permeable pavers. We have semi-permeable asphalt, other options like that. We can also add plantings that absorb stormwater way better than grass. Grass is like the lowest of the totem pole in terms of actual stormwater remediation. So removing grass is really, <laughs> like as an environmentalist, I'm not... I'm not impressed by the idea that like we shouldn't remove grass because grass is saving us from stormwater. I don't really think that's true. Um, and I'm also, I also need to put in my support. I was on here last night and there's no median option for the Glens Falls. If we're talking about consistency across the Greenway, I think it's really a shame that there was no Glens Falls median option, though I understand that there were political reasons for that. Um, I still think it's important for me to put my voice toward that. Um, uh, I think the median option with the, the, the median extension is a good one as well. Um, so thank you for letting me give input. Goodbye. Yes, thank you. I have that noted. We have another um, kind of vote of support, if you will, for the uh, median pathway and uh, duly noted about the, uh, how at the rate at which different materials can uh, handle storm water and, and assist with uh, mitigating the flow. Um, I was actually not aware of uh, grass versus other materials being being relatively low, so that's that's interesting to know. Um, and also, I've noted it sounded like median option or potentially three A three B um, to like another like one of the previous uh, commenters said, um, activating or using the greenway or the median space in some way. So I uh, appreciate those comments. Thank you. And next, moving on to Dan Zink. Hello, can you hear me? Um, I'm clear. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so I live in Waverly. I live on Ellerslie, just south of 33rd. Um, and so first off, I'm not worried about parking at all. There is so much parking in Waverly. Um, the parking that is on 33rd is either temporary or non-existent, depending on where you are. Uh, so it's not long-term parking. It's basically just like overnight parking. Um, people don't really use it that much most of the time. And if parking really were a concern, there is a huge empty parking lot across from the YMCA um, by where the uh, girls high school used to be. Um, secondly, for permeable surface, uh, I know we're running out of time. Um, I, I think that it's the, the reason that 33rd street floods is again, because of that parking lot. Um, it just like the water just pours off of that lot into the street. Um, I think having a small greenway that people actually used wouldn't really affect the amount of permeable surface overall. Um, okay, so thank you so uh, much so, for listening. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you very much. Perfectly timed. Um, we're, we have about 10 seconds left. I apologize to those who weren't able to get verbally to verbally here, but as I uh, was mentioned in the, tech, in the chat, please do. Uh, we'll save the chat record and we'll get back to you at another time. So thank you. Hello. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. All right. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'll introduce myself, um, and then I'll, I'll get things set up on, on my end here, um, and I'll give Tiffany an opportunity to introduce herself as well. So I'm Brad Deese. Uh, I work with rk &K Engineering as a senior landscape designer, um, and I've had the opportunity to, to work on the Greenway here. So again, the goal for, for this uh, breakout session in these breakout rooms is really just to, we want to hear your thoughts. You know, uh, if you have concerns, we want to hear concerns. If you have ideas, we'd love to hear ideas. If you just want to say, hey, this is great, and we really like that you're doing something here, that's great too. We love positive, you know, 
uh, encouragement and feedback. So uh, I'm going to share my screen just so we have something up um, and we can flip through that story map uh, as a group if we need to. Uh, Mike had sent out in the chat uh, a link to the story map as well. So feel free if you want to bring that up on a separate browser, or separate screen. You can kind of look through it at your pace as well, but we'll use that sort of as a prop uh, to talk through some of these things. So I'm sharing my screen now, and hopefully everyone is seeing the story map here. Um, and what we'll do to get started is if you do have a question, comment, concern, just want to talk a little bit, um, there is a button at your control panel, which um, for me right now is located at the bottom of my screen. Um, depending on how you have your Zoom set up, it may be at the bottom most likely, or uh, maybe at the top or on the side. And there's an option for reactions, and there's a little raise button, hand, uh, raise hand button, and you can just click that. We'll, you know, we'll raise hands, and I'll go down the list as I see folks pop up, and I'll just try to go in that order. So again, if you can keep questions, comments around 30 seconds or so, we'll see if we can get through everyone's. Um, if we can't quite finish discussing everything, uh, or if you have additional questions, we can loop back around too. Just want to make sure everyone has a little bit of uh, time to to be heard here. So um, I, I said a lot. I don't know if, uh, if Tiffany, you have anything else that you wanted to, to add or say. Feel free to, you know, to jump in as well. No, I just want to say good evening to everyone. I see some old friends. Um, and for the, I am uh, the Deputy Chief of Engagement with the Department of Transportation. And um, we just want to get your thoughts tonight. Um, and let's just jump in and to give them a go. All right, awesome. So with that, let's let's go ahead and we'll get started. Um, so John was the first one that popped up on my screen here with a raised hand. So John, if you want to unmute yourself and, and let us know what you're thinking. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So I just have a couple questions. So uh, my first question is uh, the 12 foot width of the greenway. Is that the same width as the currently uh, constructed section of the trail? Uh, and if that's the case, it see I wrote on the trail today, actually, just to, uh, go and see it before this meeting. And it seems just like a little bit, uh, tight to have both bicyclists and pedestrians. It doesn't give much room for people to navigate around it. And then my second question was, uh, if you go with option three, where the greenway is off to the side of the meridian, do you see any future development? Uh, to the actual center of the meridian besides the greenway, as an example, like the meridian on uh, Utah Place. And that's it. Awesome. Well, I, great questions, John, and thanks for thanks for bringing those up. Um, so to address your first one, that 12-foot, um, yes, I believe that is what um, is constructed and that we're planning for is a 12-foot uh, medium at, you know, at minimum. Certain site restrictions are going to dictate that to a certain extent. Um, we're trying, you know, to work within the right of way. Um, so trying to avoid, you know, things like utilities, impacts to trees and environmental impacts. Um, so that could, you know, that could vary and we'll know that going further into design. Um, but that would be sort of the, the standard uh, as of now. And then as for the, yeah, the median, um, this is one portion of the greenway where we are um, showing this as an option and we're collecting feedback on. Uh, I think it would be great. I think that option has certainly some challenges and I'll just scroll to it here on my screen so everyone can see what we're talking about. Um, so putting that kind of right in the center of the road corridor, it certainly has its, its challenges. Um, there's some great old, older growth trees there that we would like to, you know, not harm. Um, we have to think about access to that. Um, but I think if we go in there and disturb, there could be opportunities to, you know, put some things like benches or site amenities. Um, I don't believe that's in the scope of the project for right now. Um, but thinking longer term, uh, I could certainly see that being utilized. So next up uh, is, I see Patrick uh, next up on my screen. Thanks. Um, I've, I like aspects of all of the different options, but um, I guess as a transit rider, I'm a little nervous about 
sort of the impacts that one or three would have on sort of the bus routes that run along 33rd Street. And so I guess one of the things I'm curious is, about is for, because one and three would basically take you down to one lane in a direction, whether that's eastbound or westbound. Um, but I guess I know there's been a lot of concern about the tree impacts, and I guess I'm curious if there's the possibility for the city to do a pilot test of um, building one block of the trail in the in a median and seeing sort of working with rec and parks and forestry on sort of how how could we do that in a way that has minimal um, to no impacts on the tree roots and testing that out for for a year or two because we're still quite a ways away from actually building the whole thing, but maybe testing it out and on one block seems like that, that could help answer some questions. Yeah, I think that's a great idea, Patrick. Um, I know on some uh, other projects, similar projects that we've worked on, um, we've, we've worked with a municipality to come up with some temporary kind of test fits, um, whether that be setting out, you know, traffic cones, um, some temporary striping, um, you know, putting out some temporary measures to see what the impact of traffic is. And there's certainly some some traffic impact studies that will need to be done as as we move forward. Um, if we look into either reducing or tightening lanes throughout the the greenway. Um, and I don't you know, I don't want to speak out of turn. And, and Tiffany, I don't know that you'll have an answer for this, but I don't know if there's been any discussion on on doing any sort of testing or if that's been done uh, in the past. I have not heard of any testing um but it's a good idea I, you know it's something worth considering and we can take it back to the group but no i have not heard yeah yeah and and i think that's a great one to, to take back to the group and i think that's just another level we really do want to make sure that community voices are heard and concerns are are addressed and i think that could be a great way to do it um so next up we have kim Hi. Um, so yeah, I had a couple questions. The first one being, um, with all the trails that have already been created, what has been the most popular and what have been some of the negative impacts that the communities or people have mentioned or have had because of those trails or the impact of the trails to the neighborhoods and communities, kind of what is the feedback? Um, the second part is how are you tackling major intersections and the other Situations throughout the city, we have some major intersections on that road, including the Alameda, Lock Raven, even at Hillen, the transition to, Mon to uh, Montebello, they're um, very wonky and lots of cars moving in lots of different directions as well as buses. So I'm just curious as to how you have tackled that on other routes as well. And then with the, the two suggestions for taking out the lanes, like what is your solution to parking on the street as homeowners don't always have uh, the opportunity in the back of their homes to park. You're going to be taking away entire parking for an entire um, community. So just mm -hmm. suggestions along those lines. Yeah. Thank you, Kim. And, and those are definitely things that we need to take into account. Um, I know at this level, we haven't gone into an in-depth uh, parking study or uh, tree inventory or traffic study. So those would all be part of sort of the next phases of design. Um, and those are all things that we will need to look at. And we would, you know, would like to study that and share that data. Um, and I think one of the most important pieces is the community voices. So having not only the folks uh, like you joined us on the call, um, but having neighbors participate in sharing this link around and, and get as many uh, voices heard as we can. Um, so we can really understand where parking is, you know, a big issue, um, where it may be okay to lose some spots. Um, you know, it's really context driven. Uh, in some areas of the corridor, there's a little more uh, parking on side streets available. There's towards the commercial area. I believe it's the intersection in Greenmont. Um, you know, there's some additional on street parking where the, the road corridor kind of widens. So there are some options there and, and we'll certainly have to look at that. Um, for the, the sort of traffic and flow and the intersections, that's going to be dependent really on um, which, cr which cross-section or alternative that we're looking at here on the story map. Um, there's going to have to be some traffic engineering and some studies to see. Um, we want to accommodate you know, all sorts of movements um, to not only get people across safely, but also comfortably. So it's one thing for it to be 
you know, kind of metrically safe and we look at the statistics and all that, but also so people feel comfortable, you know, whether it's crossing over into the median and then crossing back out to get to their destination, um, whether it's being adjacent to the, the travel lanes there with the extended sidewalk option. Um, so that's something we'll have to look at. And um, for the, the second or the first part of your, your question, I don't know, Tiffany, if you have any um, insight into that, you might be better suited, but have you heard any overarching um I guess, concerns with other portions of the trail and or, um, you know, any feedback as to what some of the more popular trails or more traveled trails are? Uh, no, I haven't. I'm kind of new to the department. Um, I know I was I'm a little bit more familiar with the Herring Run Trail, but I have not heard of a lot of concern um, or issues. I know that we did a lot of work um, on those trails between Rexham Parks, DPW, and transportation. Um, but no, I haven't heard any a lot, or a lot of feedback about them. Okay. And we, we kind of went into depth as far as some of the, the trail use. Hey, everyone, this is Matt uh, back with you. But I do see a lot of hands up. So we will have some frequently asked questions added to the website. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to answer these. But I do want to make sure that we have everyone has an opportunity to ask their questions or make their comments. and their preferences known. Um, so let's, let's keep it moving so we can hear from as many people as possible. Great. All right. So let's, um, let's move on to Kevin. He's had his hand up. Yeah. Thanks. Two quick comments. One is uh, slightly outside of tonight's topic, but from the Northeast section of Lake Montebello to the new underpass uh, with the Herring Run Bridge, there's no trail, there's no ADA accessible path. So that's something I hope gets looked at later in terms of tonight's 33rd issue. Um, I, I used to walk around the lake years ago before there was the median separating the people from the cars on the southeast area. And it was scary at times when you literally, the only thing separating the pedestrians, the, the bikers and the vehicles was a little white line on the road. So in terms of all of the designs except for two, is there any barrier other than having it raised? Is there any barrier having the, uh, the uh, path, the trail protected from the cars? Uh, other, if, if there aren't any, then I would think uh, item number two is the only one that I would feel comfortable using all the time because I'm literally separated from the cars with, with that, whereas the others I'm elbow to elbow with the cars and the way folks are driving these days, I think I would find that a pretty scary experience. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. Yeah, and then we can add some kind of landscape in there, kind of have some kind of lawn buffer um, and additional tree plantings, you know, it just depends on the space and kind of the width at that section. Um, and so I think we will kind of want to get some general consensus and then kind of take it from there with, again, adding some more of those uh, aesthetic needs. And thank you for the comment uh, at the bridge and the ADA, ADA accessibility. Um, all right. Uh, who is next, Brad? Uh, it looks like on the list, uh, is it Marizu? And please correct me if I'm pronouncing your name wrong. Yeah, that's me. Can you hear me? I can. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, so I had two questions. One around maintenance uh, of these trails, you know, like for the one that's going to go that, you know, like option two, where it would go through the middle of the Homestead Brother Parkways uh, between trees. What happens when it snows? Like, like it, what happens with the salt runoff? How is that maintained? Um, so that was my one question. And then my other question is, there are parts of those Olmstead Boulevards that are already cut up for turning lanes. What happens then? Like, you know, if I'm thinking about it, I would say like uh, Alameda, there's a, like a pretty, like it's already cut down to probably the, the width of a tree, right? So how do, how does that work? And what are the sight lines for drivers when people are trying to go through? You, you know what I mean? Like, cause there's a lot of turning and these are wide boulevards, right? So like, how does a person who's walking through from say, maybe the wide to like Lake Montebello and they've got to cross Alameda and Lock Raven and Hillen which is a hot mess right now. Um, how do they get, like, if they're not on the sides that are like, you know, like where they're seen and by the like traffic lights, how do they get through um, safely 
And additionally, are we creating like a pathway that like the current uh, biker gang can now just use? <laughs> like, <laughs> you this know, one to, is to drive, drive through the middle. <laughs> no, this so is for questions. everybody to use. I can I can answer that part. It's for everybody to use. It's not just for no. Bikers. I mean the illegal bikes that run through the city um, that we currently are those ones. Not 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 the people who are on the. The, I mean, the motorized ones, the ones that pop wheelies that are going down um, hard road. The, the dumb people, yeah. <laughs> well, no, we're is not that, creating this for them, but. Um, is that, I mean, that should be, it should be on your radar as that's that's what can and is likely to happen, right? Yeah, that, that's certainly something that we're, you know, is is a concern and it, it is a, a problem and a deterrent for people who you want to use the trail for biking, for, you know, walking their, their kid in the stroller or their dog. Um, so there's certain design uh, elements that we can uh, put in to, to try to deter that. Um, things like bollards. Uh, we need to be careful to not make it, you know, such an obstacle that it deters then, you know, bicyclists and people who might be using it for, you know, commuting that way um, or for walkers or joggers. We want to make sure that that's that's easy to use um, in the traffic studies and, and further into design. If, if the median greenway is something that uh, the community is supporting and really wants to see, that's certainly going to have to be something that is is looked at and studied. Um, there are certain things in the design, such as landscaping, um, where any new trees, any plant material would all be set back from the edge of the paving to, to make sure that uh, pedestrians and bicyclists are seen when approaching an intersection. Um, there's also mechanical methods. There's painting and striping. Um, you know, budget and uh, context really drive a lot of that. But that's certainly something that we're going to have um, on our radar and be thinking of and, and aware of. Um, so we will not have a, you know, we don't have a solution for that yet. But that's certainly something that will be taken into account when we move forward with the designs. Okay. You said new trees. We're the old, the old ones that were put in a long time ago. They get to stay, right? Yes. I mean, I'm be... not a big fan of the median one because I really do feel like the history historical value of those boulevards like it's part of why the houses that are along the side don't look like they're on a highway so like you know like four lanes of traffic and parking like you know like that yep. and i you know i feel like the people who are right on those parkways especially in the residential period spots it gets to it it feels residential because of the separation and so i i definitely right. have concerns with alternative too um but i'll let other people speak all right. Yeah, thank you. And and certainly preserving trees where we can is going to be an important piece to us. Um, so, uh, Nat, I think you're up next. Can somebody else go? I actually have to step away for just a second, but I'll be right. Sure. We'll, we'll circle back to you. Um, so then next up on my list, uh, I have, looks like Peggy has her hand raised. Yes. Um, you mentioned earlier that traffic studies have not been done yet. Uh, not in depth. Mm -hmm. sorry, sorry just to, yeah just to correct so not in-depth traffic studies we've looked at the data that's publicly available um to determine where any sort of high high traffic counts or incidents for with pedestrians or um or motorists are so we've identified some of those locations um but there's further study when you get into the the design portion okay then what um arrangements are being made for safety. There are a lot of single female head of households who take public transportation and would be walking along these paths. As it is right now, it's uh, hard to get police or hard to find police in Baltimore City. So when, when these single females come home after work and it's dark Done for the and let's say they had to park on the <laughs> side street what is being done to what's going to be done to protect them sure so i think some of the some of the factors we'll look at certainly is, are, are going to be um you know uh, street lighting making sure that things are well lit so there's a couple of safety principles that uh will definitely be at the forefront of the design um there's an acronym septed uh, it stands for um, crime prevention through environment, environmental design. 
Um, so we think about things like the sight lines. Um, how far can you see? Can approaching vehicles or approaching people see you? Um, keeping shrubbery low so that it's not an area where folks can hide. Um, choosing the right planting materials uh, or placing, you know, crossings and um, areas of access where it's high visibility um, so that, you know, it it's not as, you know, suspicious. It's, it's in the open and, um, you know, there aren't opportunities for that. So those are all factors that, that certainly go into, into the design. Um, and we want to make sure nobody's going to use the greenway if they, they feel unsafe. So that's, that's a priority. Can everyone please make sure you have your phone on mute or your uh, computers on mute if you're not speaking? And we're coming down feedback. to three minutes here. So I'm going to have uh, Matt's not back yet. So Deborah is the next Deborah. one with uh, her hand raised. Hi, thank you. Um, I have a couple of questions. First of all, it's that um, alternative two. I'd kind of be interested in hearing what how you would mitigate uh, any impacts on both the environmental and the historical significance of those uh, of of the uh, Olmsted Boulevard medians. Um, like, would you be using asphalt, for example, or would you consider softer types of uh, pavements that could uh, keep the green spaces open rather than having covering everything with asphalt? I know you. I know that literally won't happen, but. Is there going to be just another strip of asphalt down there or are there other alternatives that would be environmentally sensitive as well as somehow preserve at least the aesthetics of the boulevard? And then my other question was, and I came in upon this a little late, I'm so sorry, but when uh, we were hearing about what the uh, map was going to look like, there was some implication to me that the, uh, that the intersection of 32nd, 33rd and Hillen, because it's painted and it's been narrowed, that somehow that's okay now. Whereas any of the people who live around there and drive along there can tell you it is anything but okay. Is it is the assumption that that intersection is going to stay the way it is, or is there going to be a serious redesign of it? I can answer that, Brad. As far as currently, um, we've met with the community. We are right now um, coming up with some plans, and we'll be getting back to the community about thirty uh, third and Helen. Um, we are going to be making some immediate uh, changes to improve that. So that that in particular intersection had is you know up for some change some changes. So it wouldn't be a part of, although it would be a part of this um, trail. It won't be the same as it is right now. Okay, great. And then the other question about the uh, environmental and historical impacts. And I will mute myself. Sure. So great question, Zebra. Thank you. Um, so for the aesthetic portion of it, in our renderings, we do show it as asphalt. Um, it's a likely candidate for material. It's certainly not the, the final material that will be used. Um, things like budget will weigh into it. Environmental impacts, certainly. Um, we have to think about access. So ADA access, whatever material we choose, has to be safe, has to be accessible. Um, and in these portions where they're, you know, we may, you know, get into the historic medians. Uh, we certainly want to pick a material that matches the character um, while still keeping those other things into consideration. So I'm going to jump and Nat's back. And if you have, uh, yep. if you want to go ahead and voice. Yep. I will right. try to do this as quickly as possible. Um, so, so on the options that are on the sidewalk, uh, what is the plan going to be for bus stops uh, and is there still a anything in the plan about earlier plans had closing smaller intersections as part of the plan um, and then uh, is there a way to do it to build it so cars can physically not drive into it um, and then I had heard that there's a tree replacement plan because a bunch of those trees are Zelkova elms that Thank you, everyone, for joining us. It looks like we have about 26 participants. My name is Nikia Mack. I'm with Aceto Consulting. Mm -hmm. um, our firm is helping the Department of Transportation with outreach and engagement for the Greenway Trail Project. I'm joined today by Shana Rose from the Department of Transportation. Um, just want to 
go over the housekeeping rules again. As Melissa said, we ask that everyone raise their hand to speak and try to keep their comments uh, to about 30 seconds. I know, I know that's brief, um, but we do want to be able to hear from everyone. If you are uncomfortable with speaking because the meeting is being recorded, feel free to use the chat function that is at the bottom of your screen. If you are joining us by phone, and I can't see the participant list, but if you are, you can press star nine to raise your hand and star six to unmute. Um, let's see what else. Uh, so the purpose of the breakout room is so that I can help facilitate a conversation around what you just saw along 33rd Street. So I'm going to begin sharing my screen and Shana is going to drop that link again into the chat for the breakout session if you want to just take a look um, on your own, in your own time. If you want to share it with anyone, um, feel free. And then later on, we'll be going back to the main room to do a little survey and activity exercise um, all related around uh, the 33rd Street Trail. Shana, can you see my screen? I see it, Nakia. Okay, thanks. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Um, let's see, Pete, I see you've had a quiet hand for some time, if you could unmute, and let's just start the conversation because we already have hands and that's great. Hi everyone. Thanks for having this meeting and giving the opportunity to give input. Um, we live over by Howard street and I commute to take our children to preschool at the Y on 33rd street every day. Uh, we take them by bicycle and right now riding on 33rd street just is not an, not a safe option. So we have to take a pretty circuitous route. Um, so I just want to throw in an option two for that median running trail would be, a huge benefit to our family. If you go on side streets, either north or south of 33rd Street, you got a bunch of hills and valleys. It's kind of tricky, whereas 33rd is reasonably flat the whole way and would be a great connection both to our child care solutions and to get over to Lake Montebello. Uh, appreciate the time. Thanks. Thank you, Pete. I appreciate that. If you could just put your hand down for me so I can keep track of who I've already spoken to. Um, Corey. Uh, if you could unmute and share with us. Corey Jennings, it looks like your hand is up. And the unmute button is at the bottom of the page. If you kind of just hover over, you should be able, there you go. I'm, just, I'm sorry, did you call on me? I apologize. Yes. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Somebody came to my door asking for a, a signature for something. So That's all right. Um, I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to also reaffirm uh, Pete's suggestion of alternative two. It does seem to make uh, the most sense. And also as a cyclist uh, being on that, on that roadway, as it is, the cars travel very fast. And even with raising the trail, I don't know that it would feel uh, that much safer with cars traveling so fast, so close. Um, and having the, the natural additional buffer would be extremely helpful. So I do believe in that. And also, I'm very hopeful one day that I can walk my child, you know, a future child along that pathway. Um, and I don't know that I would feel very safe with the, the raised pathways on either side. So uh, I fully support alternative two. Thank you very much for having this meeting and sorry for the, the delay. No problem. No problem at all. If you could also just put your hand down so that we can keep track of who we've spoken to. Uh, Shane, I also see a quiet hand from you. If you could unmute. Oh, uh, yeah, sure. I just wanted to uh, add my support also to alternative two. Um, I think, and actually in addition to that, I think in certain areas, um, most notably in front of like the Y and uh, where Memorial Stadium used to be, um, we have plenty of room to expand the median. Um, and I'd really like to see it not ever be a four lane highway anywhere along the stretch of 33rd. It, it's just what contributes to traffic noise and yeah, just, it seems like we could put a trail almost anywhere in those sections. Um, 
but yeah, I would love to go to Mont- Lake Montebello more often. I just don't have like a very good way to get over there. And I don't really want to drive over there and park my car in front of other people's houses. And, it, you know, I'd much just rather uh, bicycle there. So uh, thank you. Thank you. Again, um, just in case you're joining us by phone, um, all three of the residents that spoke earlier uh, commented on uh, alternative number two being uh, the preferred option. And that option is actually the median uh, trail uh, option that they are selecting. Um, so that would put the trail through the median that exists along 33rd Street. Um, and now I see another hand from Jay Seacott. Yes. Hi. I hope you can hear me. Thank you for having this uh, open input session. Uh, This is John. uh, And um, I want to point out that the current unsafe conditions of 33rd Street will cease to exist. So the current layout for bikes goes away. Uh, So no one likes what is there now. Uh, And furthermore, with any of the new uh, uh, programs of uh, alternate designs, uh, speed controls, uh, speed humps, and so forth are critical to be on the through lanes so that there is uh, we can get away from the high speed traffic altogether in this uh, residential spread. Uh, I am uh, strongly opposed to alternate number two. I think that the existing greenway is something that has historically brought uh, property values up in the community and made it desirable. And there are different redevelopment plans in play to again uh, elevate property values in the area. Uh, And I think that uh, uh, destroying the uh, green lawn that is shared by all the residents uh, by putting paving down the center of it is a negative uh, change. So I uh, think that the 1A, 1B, and uh, 3A, 3B are superior to 2. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. And we are taking note of everyone's comment. Um, let's see if we have anything in the chat. Uh, uh, I think, Susan, uh, did you figure out how to raise your hand? Did you still want to make your comment? But we, we do see it in the chat. I can't figure out how to raise my hand, but there it is. So, so I can I can read off what I just said. That um, if if we do go, I like the median. I like the center median option just because of the safety of removing as many people as possible from the roadway, because people do speed. They will speed, and I I am concerned about the separation of individuals, children, bikers in this uh, away from the trash, away from the away from the from the cars. So. I mentioned in the chat that there's just one individual right now who really goes up and down that area and he picks up all the trash. And I know that people being people, there will be extra trash in that and all along that um, a greenway. And I, I'm just concerned about how that's going to be managed. And, um, you know, I agree with it with a caller who just talked about the idea of having traffic calming options. I have to say that my husband would prefer a uh, 1A or a, or a the other A option, um, because he thinks that people coming into the city in the cars, if they calm down, they would they would be able to enjoy that kind of access and have it come down a greenway. And if it was slow and saw people, you know, in the median or or next to them, you know, using um, the the trail, that would make give them a, a much more friendly welcome to the city. So I will get out of here and go on. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate your comment. Um, Helen, it looks like you also have a quiet hand. You can unmute. Sorry, I just was flipping back and forth um, between looking at the plan on my uh, internet browser and then coming back to Zoom. 
the median alternative two looks great. Um, my only comment, in addition to everyone else's, is what does the on and off ramp of those look like on either end? I biked down 33rd today, and um, the intersection getting into Lake Montebello um, is one of the most dangerous in the city for a biker because of the, the complexity of that intersection. I did see new flex poles there, um, which is great, but just wanted to emphasize that um, 33rd is hairy, not just the road itself, but just getting on and off of 33rd. So um, just to be mindful of that in the, whatever final solution um, or, you know, final option gets adopted. Thank you. Thank you, um, Helen. I am, again, taking notes and um, we'll take that back to the project team. Um, Chad Weeks, nice to see you. I see you have a quiet hand. You can unmute. Yeah, hi, Nikita. It's really good to see you. Um, Thanks. So I, I obviously like uh, alternative number two also, and, and like Pete, we'll, we'll be sending a child at some point to the, the new daycare that's being constructed at, at the Y, and we'll be biking there. So it would be really great to have that safe alternative. Um, the one thing that I think is a little weird with alternative two is that there seems to be an opportunity to like actually widen the median there, um, and that would also provide some traffic calming alternatives. So you know, in some of those other designs where you're putting a pathway along the side of the median, I think there's actually an opportunity to put, you know, more green space there. So maybe actually maintain that median pathway, but widen the median out, you know, two or four feet on either side to, you know, that way you get to keep the parking, but you get a narrower travel lane for traffic, slows everyone down, and then you get a bigger, greener median and you get the trail. So to me, that seems like a, like win, win, win. Um, and, uh, I also, I, I, I think maybe it was Susan, you know, commented on the litter. And I think, you know, as someone that is an active trail user, uh, I think when spaces are used more, yeah, you, you get more trash, but you also get more people out there willing to pick that trash up and throw it away. So as long as there's, you know, trash cans and things provided as part of the amenities, you know, that's something I'd be happy to do as I rode my bike along the corridor. Thank you, Jake. Um, John Hilgis. Hi, Gil. How hey, Hilgis. Your last name. Perfect. Hil That's Hil fine. Okay. Um, I'm also, uh, I live in Oakenshaw um, and cross and use 33rd all the time um, and uh, am a, in favor of option number two with the median. Um, I think it, right now the median is very beautiful, but you can't really use it, especially after it rains. Um, and so I think it would be nice to be able to walk around there and actually appreciate the, the trees as long as they're preserved um and, and maybe even more plantings um so i think option two is great and it also um helps make sure that you know the buses have a lane they can stop in because um, there's a few buses that travel down 33rd as well yes thank you so much um liz yeah, hi. Um, I live in Charles Village, and I use really enjoyed the section um, kind of over by Bird in Hand. Um, did a lot of dog walking during the pandemic, and so I would go on really long walks, and I always wanted to, like, go further down 33rd Street, but there's just not really a nice way um, to do that and still have access to green space. Um, I think my concern with alternative 1A and B um, is it and even the one, the other one that has it in the median is all the other alternatives besides two has the people right up against the cars that are moving. And I just know that like, even if you make the trail kind of wide, if there's two groups of people passing each other, that means that like one of the groups of people is really close to the edge and fast moving traffic, especially if you got rid of that parking lane. So I think that's one of my main reasons, because I know when I walk my dog around the Dell on the sidewalk, it used to be really hairy um, when the sidewalk got really close to the street. But since they did the traffic calming and they kind of extended out the area um, and just buffered the people from the fast moving cars, it's just made that side of the park a lot more pleasant. And so I would imagine 
sort of the same feel here if you put the trail right next to the traveling cars. Gotcha, thank you. Um, it looks like, uh, Pete, do you have another comment? Yeah, I just wanted to follow up. I appreciate it. Like Joe's comment about slowing down traffic on 33rd Street, I think would be a huge benefit to the corridor. Um, and then I, I think Jed kind of summed it up well, where if you widen the green space, we get best of everything, more, more green space. We get a center running trail that's separated from the cars and we can slow down car traffic. So sorry to double dip, but thank you. No, that's fine. That's fine. Um, John, your hand is still up. I'm not sure if it was from before or if you have another comment. That was from before. I'm sorry. No, it's fine. It's fine. I don't see anything else in the chat and no other. Hand. Oh, Christina, feel free to unmute. Thank you. Um, I just want to add that I live um, in Waverly, kind of in the section of houses that's between the giant and um, the Hopkins building. And I run very, you know, multiple times a week to Lake Montebello around Lake Montebello or down on the Herring Run Trail. And especially during the pandemic, what I will also say is that I feel like traffic has gotten or <laughs> the way that drivers are driving has gotten worse. Um, and very early on in the pandemic, when there was not a lot of cars out, people were really speeding incredibly fast down 33rd. And I, I basically never run down 33rd anymore. I run down Lakeside or Windermere, um, or even 35th street, uh, just because it, it, even on the sidewalk, it feels kind of unsafe to be running there. So I agree with a lot of the statements that one a B and three a B with people running so like I probably wouldn't use that because I would still be so close to the cars and and be concerned about the speed at which they're driving. So I think that alternative two is really um, the safest if if we're talking about the safety of you know pedestrians um, and bikers who are going to be using this trail. Nothing. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, caller is the name is Cold Stream Homestead Montebello. If you could unmute. Hi, Nikki. It's Mark Washington. How are you? I'm good, Mark. How are you? Uh, doing well. It's uh, great to hear from uh, residents that live outside of the Coldstream Homestead community. Uh, as you know, uh, we in uh, Chum, Coldstream Homestead Montebello, uh, worked to make the lake the destination it is. We wrote the grant uh, for the uh, disc golf courses that are there as well as uh, wrote the grant to bring in the fitness equipment, uh, did the planning early on with DOT to get the uh, planted median there. And so we've invested a great deal of time, energy, and money as a challenge community into Lake Montebello. And we're glad to see uh, that everyone uh, from outside the neighborhood uh, gets to enjoy it. Uh, with that being said, preserving the history and what I'd like to say the architectural integrity of the Olmstead Brothers Design Boulevard is paramount uh, to the residents of Chum. As the executive director here, I will speak for the residents of Chum as we did a survey that was made available to uh, the entire uh, communities through uh, SurveyMonkey. And uh, our feelings are that we are more than willing to talk about any option as long as it does not infringe or impede upon the pristine Olmstead Brothers Boulevards. I understand that visitors to our neighborhood are in fact visiting neighbor, this neighborhood because of some of the work that we've done, and we appreciate that. But also appreciate and understand that the individuals that have lived here and have sweated and worked and toiled in this community uh, would like to also preserve their property values and the aesthetic and the view of that parkway green space as it was originally designed. So I cannot agree with the what seems to be the overwhelming favorite of bikers and those outside of the immediately impacted neighborhood. I cannot support option two, but we are willing to discuss uh, options 1A, B, uh, 3A, or 3B. And uh, yeah, I am, as I said, representing uh, as executive director 
the immediately impacted community. Also, Nakia, I'd like Thanks. to add that we pointed out to DOT a number of years ago uh, alternative routes and other options. As you know, you were a part of those meetings that yeah. I don't see uh, here at all. And so we'd like to also take a look at what other possible access points could be used, such as perhaps Lakeside Avenue. Thanks. Thank you. Um, I did get a message that we have just about five minutes left in the breakout room. Um, again, we're taking notes of all the comments. Uh, Shane, I do see your hand. Hey there. Yeah, just say, you know, uh, working off of, uh, you know, what the Cold Street, uh, Cold Street, Jose Montebello folks just said, um, you, you know, our group, but I'm, I live in Abel, so uh, 33rd runs through our neighborhood also. And um, as one of the people who sits on the traffic calming committee for that area, um, you know, working with the Abel folks on this, um, yeah, we would, we, we overwhelmingly want to see this. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it is. It, 33rd runs through several places. Thank you. You're very welcome. Um, Pete, is that an old hang? No, new one. Sorry, I'm triple dipping here now. That's fine. <laughs> I apologize. Fine. That's what the conversation, um, that's what we're here for. I, I just want to follow up on the Cold Spring Homestead guys comment about, you know, the Olmstead vision for it. I mean, if you all read the Olmstead planning documents for these greenways when they were being planned in the early 19th or early 20th century, I'm sorry, I got a cranky toddler here. Um, you know, they had originally laid it out to be this great walking boulevard between parks and why we would then say that we don't want a walking path through the boulevard intended to connect parks is just kind of crazy to me. Um, and especially when we look at planning sketches that are in the Olmstead documents showing center running medians through these, uh, center running trails through these medians. I think it's pretty unclear what the intent was. So uh, I got to go. Sorry. Thanks. That's fine. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, in the chat, um, there's a message that says no proposed one falls greenway design uh down the median uh greenway not a trail preservation is primary to, to the residents we can be for smart safe bikeways and for greenway preservation all at the same time and i do agree with that um that's why we're here this evening just to have open discussion and dialogue we have just about two minutes left in the conversation. Um, if anyone else would like to unmute, if there's a caller on the phone, I don't see calling number. But again, I just just in case, I want you to know that you can raise your hand by dialing star nine or unmute yourself by pressing star six. Um, Mark, I'm not sure if that's an old hand or no. It's, it's it's a new hand, and uh, look. I don't want to appear to be, as the last Carla said, uh, crazy. Uh, but if we're able to make adjustments along the Gwens Falls Trail that does not impede or infringe on the Olmstead Brothers Boulevard as it currently exists, I would like for that to be the case. Uh, we can talk about what the intent of the Olmstead Brothers were, but we know what we actually are dealing with. Uh, the fact of the matter is that consideration and respect should be and must be given uh, to those residents of our community. And even though we are a challenged community, understand, and you understand this perhaps better than most, Nakia, as you've been a part of our efforts to bring traffic calming and bike connectivity to this area since the days of Al Fox, when we had the uh, Tri Park Festival to draw. I hate to cut you to. off, Mark, but they're, they're getting ready to pull us back into. Yeah, I, uh, I see that, but the point is, Nakia, uh, that there needs to be a weighted view given to those residents who've invested their time, energy, and money into living in that corridor and not seeing those property values impacted in a negative way. Thanks. I understood. I want to thank everyone. Um, we will be reporting. All right, folks, welcome back. We will give this just a couple moments while everybody filters in back into the main room. See, everybody's getting back in. Hope you guys had some good discussions. 
I heard a couple of you uh, making some great comments. I saw some friendly faces, some folks who were here last night, some folks that we've seen before. So thank you all for spending some time with us tonight. All right, does it look like we've got everybody back, Mike? Not quite yet. All right, give it a second then. So Mike, if you don't mind, while we're waiting for everybody to get back in, I think you're ready to pull the trigger on that contact information. So I know some of you, maybe this is your first time on Zoom. You know, maybe this story map is not for you. So in the chat, Mike is going to copy and paste our contact information again. And so that is an email address that will get you access to Matt, as well as a phone number and the project website and a direct link to our contact form on the website. So if you're on the phone and listening, uh, we'll read that phone number for you one more time at the end of the meeting to make sure that you've got that so that you can get to us. I wanna make sure as many of you as possible can provide some comments and feedback after tonight. And as a reminder, don't forget to join us tomorrow night. One more please. All right, so I think everybody's back in the room now. Welcome back, everybody. Hope you had a good chat. Uh, so we are going to take just a little bit of time here to do a report out so that the entire room can hear what you all were talking about and some of your main points. So I'm going to ask each of my room leaders to give me about, you know, maybe a minute, uh, a little bit more if you need to, to report out to make sure that we're hearing a, a well-rounded representation of what you guys heard in your rooms. So I am going to start with Nakia tonight. And Nakia, when you're ready, if you can unmute and then- There we go. There we go. Hey, Melissa, thanks. Um, we had about 26 participants in our room. Uh, very good discussion. Option two seemed to be the overall uh, alternative that everyone could agree on, although there was some discussion about maintaining the medium as it exists today, not getting rid of that green space. Trash was, or litter was also brought up in the discussion around who would, you know, maintain the trail, um, you know, that, that discussion, but that was the broader conversation. Okay. Yeah. I mean, maintenance is everything, right? We're going to build something. We've got to take care of it. So I know Matt and his crew and folks at the city have been chatting about that and that's going to enter into the program overall. So um, definitely a good concern and a, a great topic to chat about in your room. All right. I'm going to go around the room and call on Brad next. Brad, how was your room? Um, my room was great. I wish you guys all could have been there. Um, so I'm going to out and the first thing I want to do because uh, we got cut off and Nat asked some great questions and I just want to address that really quickly. Um, so in terms of the the corridor and if the median is pursued, um, certainly would have to look and um, do a, a tree inventory, see what kind of uh, shape the trees are in, see if they're candidates for you know replacement, takedown, if they're safety issues. So that's something that is on the on the radar. Um, bus stops as well. Um, we understand that some of those, we want to make sure one of the goals of these, these greenways is to connect people to, to public transit and make sure that there's connections there. Um, so we'll certainly be thinking about uh, any effects that they may have the bus stops uh, and accommodate those so that they're safe for folks who are getting to the bus stop using the transit um, and then also people who are passing by on the greenway. Um, and the, this one ties into something else that we talked about, uh, just concerns with intersections, what those are going to look like, um, how people are going to be able to, you know, possibly travel safely either to the median or from one side of the road to the other. So that's something that will come uh, in design. We had uh, someone bring up a, a, you know, a question about testing. So some of these are going to have impacts, and that was one of the themes, impacts on parking. So would there be any opportunities to do testing to partially shut down a lane and see what that does to traffic in, in uh, real time. Um, some other concerns about uh, safety. So just thinking about people using this trail at night, in the evening, folks that are by themselves, um, as well as making it safe. Um, this, uh, a nice paved greenway, you know, might be very tempting for some folks on dirt bikes. Um, so, you know, we want to deter that. Uh, we really want to focus this as a a uh, path for pedestrians and for bicycles um, and deter, you know, any motorized 
efforts there. Um, and then I think to, to summarize, another point that was brought up is just thinking about materials um, and the, the medians, especially some of the historic value of some of the neighborhoods that we pass through and making sure that materials match the, the palette of the neighborhood and, and fit well. Um, and then, of course, just addressing any environmental concerns if trees get removed or more impervious pavement comes in. Um, so I think that's a, a pretty good summary. There's a lot of really good feedback. Uh, good. Good. Great. Yeah, for sure. You know, as we get into like technical drawings and understanding what's out there and having a, a survey done, which is, you know, where we look at every tree placement, where the curb is, where any utilities are, where those bus stops are. Those are all things that go into our technical evaluation of how is this going to work? How will it be the safest? So the point about the intersections is fantastic, right? We want to minimize crossings as much as we can. We want to be consistent on one side of the roadway if we can. So sometimes as we get into design, when we start looking at the intersections and the safety and the crossings, that does sway us to go on one side of the roadway or another or make a design decision. So you guys are way ahead of us. That's great stuff to think about. So thank you for bringing those up and making that rise to the top so that we can put that in our technical matrix of how we're making these decisions. All right. Awesome, Brad. Thank you. So let's go around to Colin next. Thanks, Melissa. Um, we had a great discussion in our group. And actually, it's, you just brought up a good segue because one thing that did come up uh, in our in our room was uh, transitions at intersections both on both sides of the corridor to make sure that those made sense and were intuitive uh, and and safe. So definitely that was that conversation was reflected in our, our group as well. Uh, there definitely seemed to be an overall preference for um, the median pathway, alternative two. People, there was a concern, however, about um, impervious services, which uh, was brought up, I think, in other groups, it sounds like. Uh, we did talk about the fact that there could be um, pervious pavers or other materials, so we got into a bit of a materials discussion and also learned something new that grass is not always the best, apparently the best way to um, channel or to absorb um, runoff, and there are other materials that could work even better than grass. Um, so also... Looking at amenities, uh, it was brought up that uh, the median greenway or um, even alternatives 3A or 3B where the median is activated and used as part of the greenway, um, that there could be amenities added, park benches or other, other things to uh, make the space usable in, in different and supportive ways. And there was also definitely concern um, about parking, uh, the loss of parking for some of the alternatives. But then also a similar uh, or alternatively feelings from some of the uh, group, group members that there wasn't parking wasn't as much of an issue. So there are thoughts on both sides of that of that spectrum. Um, and I think that was those are the highlights. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and traffic impacts and parking impacts are all things that we need to jump into in the next phases of design. So good points there, folks. And amenities as well, because that's, you know, how we celebrate our culture and who we are is with those personal touches on the trail. So great topic to bring up. All right, let's round this out with Oscar's room. What did you guys hear? Thank you, Melissa. So similarly to the other groups, uh, the vast majority prefer um, alternative to the median greenway. Uh, there was discussion about uh, how the buffers can provide a, kind of like a safer scenario or, or, or a safer um, people will see will feel safer being uh, with a with a physical separation between the the, the, the adjacent uh, traffic. Um, however, there were uh, concerns uh, about having the the, the greenway in the, on the median. Uh, uh, one of the concerns was the the presence of trees. Uh, there was a concern about how many trees will be impacted or what will happen to those trees. Uh, there was also concern about the median not being wide enough, or the or, or, or and, and again, I know some person had a comment about the the, the health of the trees, uh, or, or how they will react if a, if a median if a greenway is, is placed on the on the median. Um, another concern was the um, the the potential or, 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 uh, of, of, the, of the greenway to, to return into a, a path for dirt bikes and also uh, trash removal. Okay, great. Yeah, and as I said, when we started, you know, that slice of road we took, we showed a, a 
foot median, but it definitely does vary. And you all know that because you live here. Um, so that's where, you know, in the next stages of design, we get to get into more of the nitty gritty of where everything is along the corridor and, and make some of those design decisions. All right. Um, did we miss anything important that was heard? Matt, are you good to go to move on? Yes. Okay. All right. Great conversations. Well, I was bouncing around and uh, yeah, just some really good, good feedback. Thank you, everyone. Good. All right. So let's take the temperature of those of you who want to participate in our Slido. Again, as a reminder, this is not the only chance you'll have to participate. You can use the story map that will be posted on our website. You can use the link from the story map later if you like. And then, of course, the phone number, the email address, the contact form, those are all ways to get in touch with us. So this is not your only opportunity. Uh, so, Mike, if you'll copy the link to Slido in the chat again for me, and that's slido.com. And then the code for the survey is 358609. And again, if you want to snap a picture of that QR code, uh, you have that available to you. So uh, thanks, Mike. Appreciate that. So I'm going to go ahead and advance my slide now. Hopefully, if uh, you guys are in the Slido and ready to go. And before we make our selection, I just wanted to do just one quick breeze through of what the options are before you get into the survey. Um, so again, I think you guys are, you guys just caught on really quickly tonight. I think you've got it. So um, this was our existing section again and where we are. Uh, the alternative 1A was showing the greenway on the north side of the roadway adjacent to the sidewalk area. Alternative 1B was showing the greenway uh, within the roadway raised up to sidewalk level, but on the sidewalk side of the roadway. And then as you all caught on very quickly, alternative two is going down the median. And then when we get into alternative three, 3A was placing that greenway at median level, just right adjacent to the median on the north side of the roadway. And then 3B was doing the same thing, placing that greenway right alongside the median, but on the south side of the roadway. And so when you get into the survey, as I will click through now, um, you can choose that 1A and 1B or 2 or that 3A and 3B. So again, uh, the ones were on the outsides of the roadway adjacent to the sidewalk two is the median and the threes are adjacent to the median. So we'll give you guys a few moments just to take the temperature on this, see what you're thinking. Um, I know that some of you maybe um, are not using the Slido right now. Uh, what I'm seeing right now is uh, about 90% is choosing alternative two in the median. Um, but that's not to say that that is how this is going to shake out when we see all of your input. So as a reminder, you're welcome to go to the website. You're welcome to call the phone number, which we will say in just a few moments and uh, welcome to visit the website. So I'm gonna leave this open for just a little bit more. Uh, looks like 81% on the median. We have about 9% on 3A, which was that adjacent to the median on the north side, um, which is um, almost tied with 1A, which was on the sidewalk side on the north side. So we'll be taking a look at that as we dive in, looking at those roadway crossings again, looking at intersections, making sure that safety is really paramount and that is really the focus of this trail project as we move forward into design. So as a reminder, this project takes us just to 30% design. We will have two other opportunities for you guys to join us and give us some public input tomorrow night. Please join us if you would like to. Um, and, you know, there's, there's plenty of time to make all these great decisions about amenities and what happens and make sure that you guys really put up your stamp on this trail because it is the community's trail. All right. So I think our temperature is taken for tonight and I will go ahead and let Matt close out and then I'll bring up the screen for the contact information one more time. Mike can paste that in the chat and then we'll read the phone number one more time for those of you who are on the phone who may want to contact us that way. All right, Matt, take it away. 
Thanks, Melissa. Yeah. And again, this is kind of phase two of four um, in this public outreach phase. So again, there's still a lot of work to be done. Um, thank you again for taking the time to share your thoughts and your feedback with us. Um, this particular phase, we will have this poll open um, with the story map on our webpage um, until that first week of April, April 8th. Uh, so please, you have plenty of time to make comments, share with your friends, family, your neighbors. Um, I did see several folks from different uh, various community organizations. Uh, we'd love to do the roadshow uh, and meet with you in kind of a smaller group setting. Um, we love having those conversations. Uh, and so we'll be reaching out if you don't reach out to us first, of course. So let, let's get on the calendar and looking forward to those additional conversations. We heard a lot of consistent themes, um, not just tonight, but uh, and last night as well. You know, things around maintenance, uh, tree preservation, things of that nature. We'll continue to add to the web page with those kind of frequently asked questions so we can give you as much information as possible to help inform kind of your decisions and what your preferences are. Um, and then again, uh, continue to give as much information as possible. We also have just specific concerns that may are, you know, kind of parallel or kind of tangential to uh, this actual project. So I think the kind of issue of maintenance, even trash pickup, we kind of still have our, you know, consistent 311 services. So there's opportunities for us to kind of address those other kind of community issues. Um, but we also want to be a conduit to kind of connect you with other folks within the city um, to help deal with those issues. So um, we appreciate all of the feedback and the comments. Um, we'll continue to take this forward um, through this phase. And then we'll have, again, those other opportunities in the summer. We'll, we'll have more defined 15% plans and then rolling out at the end of the year to kind of finalize this project. So uh, thank you all very much. Uh, I think that's it for me. Uh, other than you can contact us, uh, there are more ways to connect other than just the website, but it is a great opportunity to kind of go through these options and alternatives. So please go to baltimoregreenway.com. We also have that comment form where you can have it, you know, directly make your comments there or just email me uh, at dot-community at baltimorecity.gov or go ahead and call, uh, not my cell phone, uh, but it will get to me uh, four, four, three, nine, eight, four, four, zero, nine, five. Um, and just on the logistics end, Melissa, did I get that? All right. Does it did perfectly. So there's multiple ways to connect multiple opportunities to go forward. And again, a, a lot more work to be done. Uh, but this was a, a really great start and, uh, thank you all for being here and taking the time to, to share your thoughts. That's a wrap, guys. Thank you so much for coming. Don't forget, join us tomorrow night. Um, and again, the contact information is up for you. It's in the chat. And we look forward to hearing from you all. Have a good evening, everyone. <laughs>